Morning, Chair. Hello. Hello. How are you, Chair, this morning? I'm fine, uh, Honorable Member Sundi. How are you? I'm fine, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Sundi. Morning. You were not okay yesterday, but uh, you check the minute, the, the minute. Suspecting that we must start our meeting in time. So, Mr. Mayedwa, uh, this is two members who are sitting. Uh, lean. Okay, they will. When when time comes, the President uh, of Saru is going to introduce the delegation. But uh, up front, I did get the delegation. Uh, they are about 10 and some apologies, but I'm suspecting um, I'm happy about uh, the number that is with us, let alone that they do have apologies, but the list is a sensible number. Honorable members, again, we are meeting on a day that is a special day. We, this is not our slot a Wednesday. And because uh, the office of the president of Saru, uh, they apologize on a date which we all agreed upon as these committee members. But because we are preparing that each and it, they must come and give us their annual uh, reports. And also as we are aware that we do want even the report from Isaru on their preparations uh, for RATO. Uh, I took this decision, honorable members, that let's not delay and and we ask and, and 
put the reasons why we ask a Wednesday. It was granted. I'm raising this in order that uh, Saru, they must know that our slot is always official Wednesdays. But because we have lot in our hands, uh, members compromised because uh, they, they want this work to, to be in order. So this is a special day which we are given, but uh, let me upfront thanking the members to avail themselves whilst officially they do know that Wednesday is not for the social cluster. But when uh, sometimes waving challenges, we do apply. My apology even to uh, the members uh, that uh, yesterday on their official day, they were with us and today also to our staff that they are always uh, hands on immediately that something happened in the program of COMIT. Also, let me thank the department that they are here. We know today it's a cabinet uh, meeting. Sometimes even uh, themselves, we do inconvenience themselves, but they know that uh, the measure of two departments made us to have a lot and uh, we'll be proud of this committee that uh, our work won't be behind schedules. And we know that as we're speaking, so many South African people who are players are playing your, in your, your cricket, your netball, even the, your rugby. So we wish them all the best in whatever they are doing, winning and when they are losing, they must not lose hope. Uh, we wish that uh, one other day we must all go back to stadiums. But surely as responsible South Africans, we know when we are not in stadiums, it's not a decision of an individual in the cabinet. Is a decision of collective. Uh, we are all keen to go out as South African loving uh, sport, a woman and man. Uh, by those words, I um, can say that the winter in a way started. We've been not having anything like rain in, in this uh, Western Cape, but Last week it started and I, we do feel the cold and make no mistake, coronavirus likes the area where there is a weather like chilly and cold. Let's not forget to put our mask. Uh, those uh, who have keen to go and vaccinate is their right to do so and those who have done so. Uh, now there are communications which are coming that uh, we must go and take the another jab for uh, what do we call this thing? Um, immune boosters. Boosters. Those who, yes, 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 thank you, Honorable. Those who feel like to do so, they must do. Uh, by those words, uh, I, I wanted to check uh, with the, the department who is here, and I want to check with the Saru who is here, and then after that, uh, I'll ask members to um, adopt the agenda. A department who is with us. Good morning, Honorable Chairperson, 
and the honorable members. Good morning to the president of uh, South African Rugby Union, Mr. Alexander, and the, the, the board, as well as uh, my colleagues in the department. Um, in the department, uh, the apologies have been acknowledged for minister in the cabinet committees, as well as deputy minister in the CGCG on the issue of GPVF, um, a program that uh, she has there. Uh, and then um, the DDG, I've got, it's uh, DDG Khan is in the meeting. The advisor to the minister, Mr. Mtobi Chamzashe. I, I also have uh, Simpu Mnube with the chief director uh, in the, uh, under the program uh, Recreation Development and Sport uh, Promotion. And then uh, I've got Sivuile from the deputy minister's office uh, for Sivuile Watani. And then uh, I've got um, Bongi Ramalepe, as well as um, Lordwick, um, uh, who are here in the meeting uh, with uh, me, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Then um, on the overview, uh, we can then uh, proceed, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that information, uh, Mr. President. Who is with you? Good, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, Didi. Mm -hmm. uh, currently with me, uh, Honorable Chairperson, is uh, the Deputy President, Mr. Francois Davids, the CEO, Mr. Yuri Ru, Mrs. Mimi Tao, Executive Member, Mr. Pat Keen, Executive Member, Mr. Saban, the General Manager of Operations and Finance. Apologies for Raski Rasmus, it's Rashom, it's a family emergency. We got this, the, the Springbok coach, Mr. Jack Niwawa, uh, Mr. Charles Vessel, the General Manager of Rugby, Ms. Lynn Catwell, the High Performance Manager for Women's Rugby, Mrs. Samantha McDonald, Strategic Performance Manager, Ms. Vanessa Dobo, the Head of Legal and Compliance, Mr. Kayama Edwa, a Senior Manager, Government and Stakeholder Re Re Relations, also helping us and advising us is Mr. Max Suzani on government relations and stakeholder relations. So that is our delegation and apologies are for the following. Uh, the, the following members, uh, Mary Ann, uh, executive member, uh, Mr. Peggy Sukamalo, executive member, uh, Sam Gomeni, executive member, uh, Mr. Louis Van Tiena, executive member, Mr. Lindsay Mould, executive member, Mr. Yanni Lowe, Executive member, Mr. Skalk Liebenberg, executive member, and Mr. Fafa Klutzer. They're all busy traveling to Cape Town as we have a meeting in Cape Town. So, my apologies for, for those members, uh, Chairperson. So, those are our people present, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, President. Honorable members, uh, can we put the agenda on the screen? Honorable members, I'm presenting this agenda in front of you. Can any member propose the adoption of the agenda? Chairperson. Chairperson. Yes. Honorable Zond is proposing to power for the adoption of the agenda. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Zondi. I'm having a hand off. Honorable Mshongo and Honorable Adams. Chairperson, I support the adoption of the agenda, but I'm concerned, Chair. I think the names on the members who are on the Zoom, I think we have an RB, FB, I don't know what is that. Can you have correct names for us when we engage? We must know who's on the Zoom, because there's a gentleman, uh, it's F. I'm not sure if KF and what is that? No. Okay. I think can have full names and know exactly who's on the Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, your hand, dear Honorable Adams. Thank you, Chairperson. I also wanted to second on the proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, uh, our department, uh, Saru, 
the agenda is in front of us. Please, President, your delegation must indicate who who are they. Uh, so Leka will assist them. Uh, I'm seeing the hand of Honorable Dennis. Thank you, um, Chairperson. Thank you. I just wanted to say I, I, I accept the agenda. Uh, we have accepted the agenda, but uh, it's very important that the president must know there are burning issues out there in rugby that we also would like, I would like to touch on when we after the presentation. Thank you, mm -hmm. Chairperson. Can, can, can I correct uh, our honorable members? If there are burning issues, can we ask uh, this committee to fast track and to ask the, the, the rabbi to come and brief us? Because if now we want to raise burning issues without themselves prepared, uh, we do accept uh, that proposal. Proposal. But uh, I don't think it's for this meeting. Uh, we need a briefing, a fully fledged briefing. Uh, we don't want that uh, they must give the briefing whilst they, they are not having written a submission because we want the en entire uh, briefing. Uh, I'm suspecting that. We are noting what Honorable Dennis is saying. Maybe those questions, they, they must just be raised after, after the deliberations, uh, what maybe we expect them to brief us. Because when, when, when we want the briefings, uh, it sometimes does give us a challenge if they are not prepared. Uh, we don't want to be brainwashed. Uh, I'm, I'm just putting that to honorable members, but I'm suspecting even themselves, they are noting that uh, there's this uh, um, request. Uh, I, want, I want that our meeting must be organized. Uh, and if it means that we must call them, they must come in and brief us. This meeting of today, we wanted a annual report because very soon we must go and debate. And then uh, also we want your rugby world, but there's nothing wrong that members when people are with us, uh, raise some burning issues on the media, but I'm suspecting that we want a full detail. In those words, honorable members, can I give uh, the department to do uh, they are mm -hmm. over you about, about Saru. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes. We do have apologies. Yo, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, may I have the apologies from Chair, our before staff? the apologies, apology, Chair, I've raised the R5BF. Who's the person? R5 some slash BF. On the Zoom. We must know who's on the Zoom chair. Last time we had someone claiming to be a journalist and he was not a journalist. I think history repeats itself in sports. People want the anxious to know, but can I know? I apologize. I'm not, I don't know the person, but can you have the actual name? Thank you, chair. I'm suspecting that this person is in the meeting. Uh, if he has, she or he has got a challenge. Uh, she, she or he must ask the assistance because uh, we don't take uh, um, the abbreviations of people. With you on the annual report of RAP. Do we have that? I'm not, I'm not yet there. I'm not yet there, uh, DG. Okay. You, honorable members, this thing of us just speaking, now that is get our visitors DJ, i'm not yet really giving you the that, i'm that not i'm not the yet. annual report uh dg dg i'm not yet giving you the platform uh Zolega, apologies from the members side thank you madam chair we have uh, the following apologies uh, mr mazingozi and Inkosi lutuli 
We also have an apology from Minister Mutetwa, who is attending a joint meeting of all cabinet committees. The Deputy Minister is in the Eastern Cape, where she is hosting an anti-GBV outreach program. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you so. And also now, uh, Zolega and, and the President, with this person, who has got uh, abbreviations in, in, in our chat is R5NVBF. What is that? A president. Uh, honorable Chairperson, that is not one of our daily books. So you can delete that person if you don't know. Uh, thank you, Zolega. Who is this person? Madam Chair, uh, I will find out and confirm but I do have a message from someone from PMG that they, they that could be the person, but I will confirm, Madam Chair. Uh, we cannot start a meeting that we're having a strange in our meeting. This person does now, he or she is listening to us. Uh, she must tell, she or he must tell who he is. The, R5, R, VPF, who are you? Or else we'll be uh, taking you out of this platform. Is it a ghost? <coughs> Who's this Tabi Sozul? I'm seeing uh, something in the chat of somebody written. I want this person to just open the mic and then tell us, don't delay our meeting. Uh, we'll ask the assistance that this person must be taken out of this meeting. We, uh, we are not going to start with this name, unknown person. Is anyone who's assisting you, Solek? Uh, the person is off, Madam Chair, thank you. Come again. The person has been removed, Madam Chair. Who was he or she? We don't know, Madam Chair, because when we sent a message, they did not respond yet. But if it's someone who's supposed to be in the meeting, they will give us a call or send us an SMS or an email. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mshongo, by noticing that uh, public people, they do have a right uh, to be in the platforms that Parliament is always indicating that those who want to listen, they know what to do, which channels they must get in. Um, now, can I give it to Udiji? Let's be vigilant, honorable members. Uh, I'm seeing the hand of honorable Dennis. I don't know whether it's an old hand. No, it's an old hand. Uh, it's not. Honorable Dennis. Okay, go on, DJ. DJ. Um, good morning, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I will then uh, present this, our overview on the South African Rugby Union, and then thereafter, uh, they will then present, uh, make their presentation to the committee. Uh, Chairperson, I will now switch off the video. Um, the okay. first uh, issue is that uh, we're just indicating that uh, our focus on this overview is in relation to briefing um, the portfolio committee on its you know, it's based on the notice that was given on the issue of the uh, its annual report as well as the 2023 Rugby World Cup preparations. 
Um, and therefore, then based on that, this presentation focuses more on the support provided to SARU uh, and highlighting the key issues relating to the APG report, uh, Chairperson. Um, can we then move to the next slide, Lord Work? So when we talked on the issue of how do we work with SARU and uh, providing support for 2021-22, Chairperson is just to indicate that um, as a department, we provide uh, financially and only 4.5 million uh, we transferred in the third quarter of the year. This is mainly aimed at uh, utilization for support of schools rugby programs, but also in terms of support for women's rugby programs, get into rugby program and as well as a capacity development programs that uh, SARU does run. These are mainly areas that try to focus on the transformation agenda in relation to RAPI. Now, when we look at the person on the issues around the EPG findings um, in regard to South African RAPI Union, we can just indicate that uh, the one of the most performing uh, uh, federations in achieving um, their self-set targets at 84%, uh, which I will indicate towards the end. So, but just on the categories that we focus on as we try to deal with issues of uh, uh, transformation, um, first category that deals with the administration or the board and the report uh, for 2017 to 2019 indicates that uh, they have been able to have a very transformed board in terms of representativity. Then on their national male and, uh, and under age teams, uh, which is a youth group, the Federation scorecard reflects that a demography of a senior national male team it is 61% white, demographic 22% black African, and so and largely unchanged then over the past three years. That is uh, what their findings were. Then in relation to the national female senior and underage teams, this is where a significant transformation has been observed uh, in this regard. Um, and uh, it continues to inspire particularly the young women who would like to participate in rugby, that rugby is for all races and they could be able to participate. Now, when we look at the issues of coaching and the referee structures, uh, the APG findings were that federation, the referee structures are still at 54% white, 31 black African, as well as 19% colored um, Indian. On the issue of the support base for medical as well as scientific, uh, support and the Federation's medical and scientific practitioner support is a, a full representative of all disciplines except the area of sports psychology uh, where there is still a skewed uh, representation as against the country's demographics. The next uh, slide uh, as it brings us towards the overview is just to indicate that on the school structures uh, the number of participating primary schools um, and senior primary schools was reported as 4,800 as well as 2,500, uh, which reflects a higher percentage of participating schools uh, compared to the past. However, it is important to bring to attention of the committee uh, that um, the issue of uh, school rugby um, still remains a challenge uh, in that uh, it's still skewed towards those who are previously privileged and um, mainly those also who might be in Model C schools uh, due to a number of constraining factors uh, that uh, as a department in some have noted as things that still need to be dealt with about school sport in general and the tripartite relationship between Department of Sport, Arts, Culture, as well as the basic education and the, 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 the federations under the leadership of SASCO. Uh, however, um, 
if we look at the participating primary and senior schools, uh, these were much lower, uh, 3,000 as well as 2,495 than the actuals that were uh, reported. Now, when we look at uh, what is happening at a club structure level, um, you will see that you have seen two components were focused on. One was the issue of the number of clubs uh, uh, that uh, have been reported to have declined. Uh, the report was reflecting that uh, the decline from 1,600 on the number of clubs to 1,145, but also from this chairperson, the uh, feedback we have in terms of analysis is really based on the challenges of costs uh, uh, of being part of running a club and capacity to maintain a club even if you have it, which are quite limited and they keep on getting more and more. Uh, the same problem in terms of the decline in membership, uh, club membership over the same period from 76,000 to 73,000 plus, mainly due to the issues of resources and the costs it associated with being a member and what you need to do to in order to maintain your membership um, so those are the some of the constraining factors that uh, the issue around club structures uh, are facing. In conclusion, Chairperson, however, as I indicated earlier, is that uh, the rugby, the South African rugby union, in terms of APG and its performance against the barometer target and the chart targets, uh, they are among the highest in terms of achieving their targets at 84%. Jefferson, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Tichi. On that note, uh, President uh, of Saru. Sorry, Jefferson. Yes, it is. May Tichi. I just uh, conclude, on, conclude on one issue, Jefferson? Uh, around the issue of the return of spectators. Um, okay, uh, yes. The Terabi uh, has, been, has been communicating with the department, uh, has been part of also the team that the department established to try and uh, find ways in which spectators can return safely um, and they're developing the guidelines. And they also have been quite a, one of the federations doing their best to host despite the maximum of 2,000 spectators, but they have been trying to make sure that all these become part and parcel of uh, pilots uh, so that uh, we can have an informed decision as a country on how we can best have the spectators uh, retaining. And uh, I know that the country is having an abated breath of weight around this issue. Um, of when the spectators are returning, but I can assure the honorable chairperson and honorable members that uh, working with our federations, including the South African rugby, uh, a lot of work has been done behind the scenes to prepare should there be an announcement to have the spectators returning uh, back to, the, to support their favorite teams. And the rugby has been really at full strength despite constraints related to staging, to hosting events with only 2,000 spectators and costs associated with that. But that has helped us to inform our pilot outcomes uh, that have been part of our representations uh, to the structures that deal with the issue of COVID-19 uh, uh, in the country to ensure that at the end of the day, an informed decision is made about the return of spectators and Rabi has been part of that team working with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tichi. Uh, in that note, may I call the president of SARU to lead and give us who's going to present their presentation. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I want to bring up our presentation. Even to the premium market to share. Can can somebody allow us to share our presentation, please?
the, the, we have control in the meeting and we need to, uh, to open it up for Andy Calhoun, who's, uh, who's going to be driving the presentation for us. The chairperson must be one of the administrators there. I think we'll open it up for Andy Calhoun to, 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 to run a presentation. Are you able, so? Yes, Madam Chair, Dan. Assist. assist. <laughs> Here it comes. Uh, Please to it. Honorable Chairperson, the DJ of Sport, uh, honorable members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, the presentation we'll do today will touch the six areas. One is the impact of COVID-19. Second one will be the industry saving plan. Third uh, part of the presentation will be the British and Irish Lions store and tender restrictions. Now, the first one will be prioritizing women's rugby. The first one will be the preparation for the World Cups 2021, 2022, 2023, and our team performances. And the last point will be a transformation. And I certainly, if we do the transformation, we can answer some of the things raised by the DG. If not, we'll answer any other question, Chairperson, but I'm going to start off. And uh, the first person to, 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 to deal with the first part will be our uh, uh, person in charge of our finances. So the, 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 I'll ask uh, Mr. Bobby Savan to, to lead us off. Thank you. The button. Good morning, Chairperson and honorable members. Uh, um, I am the General Manager of Operations and Finance. Um, um, SRI SRI rates in, excess in excess of 80% of its total revenues through the sale of broadcasting and sponsorship commercial rights. The slide in front of you reflects that trend in terms of what we've been able to generate during uh, the periods. Um, and, and very clearly from the slides, there's this decline in 2020, um, which was, was of course a, a COVID hit year um, and, and a year that um, the Springboks actually did not participate in any matches. So, so although the <laughs> decline is significant, it could have been much worse um, because of that no participation. And generally, as a rule, no participation means no generation of such commercial um, income. I can tell you that to be able to generate even at that lower level of uh, uh, revenue uh, between broadcasting and sponsorship, it was only achievable uh, through the cooperation and working with our stakeholders where we effectively could still share in revenues, although we did not participate um, in a particular uh, in, in the, those periods. Um, so we've been we've been in ICU. Um, we've we've tried to keep the lights on. And I think uh, a little bit later through one of the other slides, we'll talk through the industry savings plan. Um, if you look at the slide on the uh, that's currently uh, in front of you, uh, this this kind of just paints the picture that you know two years down the line, we've been struggling to for, for our teams to participate. The slide is really illustrative of the the impacts that it has at our franchise level. So we currently um, have four international franchises that participates in the United Rugby Championships. Just for them to keep the lights on with no crowds in the stadium, not collecting season tickets, etc. We are looking at an average of 30 million cash shortfall only for the interim of 2022, having just about survived uh, to keep the lights on from 2020 up until 2021. Uh, so we are in crisis. We're not out of it yet. Uh, it's important that we keep the industry afloat um, and actually critical that we get to some form of a normality to be able to secure the revenue that is required to, to um, run the industry. If I go on to the next slide and, and kind of preference by that opening remark, it talks about the industry saving plan. Um, and this was a plan at a point in time where, where we couldn't be reactive to the situation. We knew that our content will not be made available. We knew that we're not going to be having a revenue. Uh, and we still had a system of, of, of quite significant fixed cost. And, and that, was why, that is why it was important for us to to have an industry savings plan, which, which really was a collaborative e effort between South African Rugby Union and its members to make sure that, you know, post or coming through this COVID that we still have a business to run 
um, and decimated by the fact that we are unable to generate uh, the revenues uh, that we needed to run um, the industry. Um, it included uh, the cancellation of the, the, the competitions. And I think to the, to the previous speaker, um, if you're in a situation where you've got fixed costs, you need to look at certain projects that unfortunately, if it's not self-funded, we just had to mothball at a point in time. And therefore we were kind of on hold until we resume to some form of a uh, normality. Uh, sorry, Chairperson. Sorry to interrupt at this point. I see we have a, a member here that is a, a member that is suspended by the South African Rugby Union on the, on the, on the Zoom call, Mr. Zaltmarie. How did he come in, in, in here? Who did give him the, the link? Uh, he must be out of the meeting. Why is he doing that? Who did give him the link? So, please handle that. Noted, Madam Chair. Is he still in? Why people are doing this to, to just get in a meeting where he or she is supposed not to be whilst there is a, a platform that everybody must be there? Your own members president, they did give him the link because the link we don't give any other people except those who are supposed to be in here. But thank you for that observation. I, because my screen is having the presentation. So let me check again. I can't see. No, thank oh. you, Who, Who's that? Thank you, is, is is he out now? He's gone, Chairperson. Thank you, Monitor, for us in order that you must tell uh, those who are not supposed to be part of your delegation. We do appreciate that. Uh, hope we must continue. Thank you. Presenter, please okay, continue. Please Thank you. Where is the presenter now? Why are you quiet? Um, thank you very much. Um, so just on the, that, that was just concluding the industry saving plan in terms of the collaborative um, efforts and approaches that was needed to let it take a, a lot of fixed costs out of the system, just to make sure that when we return to normality, that we've got a system that can actually just continue producing the rugby products um, that is required. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable President, who's next to talk to us? Sorry, Chairperson, I was on mute. I think what the, what the CFO just presented now was the, the funding of SARA and how we raise our funds, but that, that funding funds all the way from the spring box all the way down to school rugby. So when we have a, 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 a pandemic or a disaster like we just had, it has an impact right across the board. Because if we don't, if we don't play international rugby, we don't get paid. And that, that, that same funding affects throughout our system. We have to have a cut throughout all our systems. And the, and the biggest loss was school rugby. School rugby and community rugby. And we will feel that pinch maybe before 2027 or shortly afterwards because the whole group of children that hasn't competed for two years. And if that is the problem for, 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 for our high performance uh, program. We'll continue, Chairperson. Yes. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so on the slide now, now is an update on the Brazil Irish line. Yes. Madam Chairperson. Yes. Thank you. Go on. Thank you. Um, so the British and Irish Lines tour um, was delivered um, successfully in 2021 with no um, spectators um, present. I think the way we had structured our commercial arrangements was such that it was a, a, a very costly exercise to deliver the tour in South Africa. But I think the way we've structured our commercial um, arrangements and transactions was such that we were able to generate the, the, the sufficient revenue to be able to cost, uh, cover the costs. Um, and also what is important that, you know, getting out of 2021, that the profit that we did generate through that series actually got us to a point where we can deliver a break even um, SARU or SA rugby numbers for 2021. Uh, but also having supported our, our entire system in terms of being able to return to rugby and, and participate in the competitions that I'd indicated before. The chairperson also, the, 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 the economic impact that we lost for that event was a 6.8 billion impact to the economy. But the main people who suffered from, from that is informal traders around the stadium. You know, over December, we had several of these individuals calling, looking for assistance. So while we're not having spectators in the stadiums, it's not only affecting formal side of things, but the informal side is badly affected and they've got no uh, place to turn for compensation. Okay. Madam Chair, if I can continue, um, just the, the following slides really takes um, or reflects our sponsorship income, a, a very crucial income line, as I explained earlier on. Um, we've had we've seen the significant decline, and I think the slide just illustrates how important it is for us to generate uh, the, the the revenue lines across the, the various properties. The sponsorship derived from uh, or attributed to the spring box but remained absolutely crucial in terms of our total revenue mix and in terms of our total sponsorship mix. So about 60%, 66% of the total sponsorship income will come uh, directly from spring box and spring box um, activity. Uh, versus 70% holistically that comes from our other national teams, inclusive of the Springboks, i.e. the Springbok 7s, uh, where we generate significant amounts of sponsorships. It's not quite at the targets that we want to, to get to. Uh, we're building up on that. Um, 2020 and 2021 had seen that significant decline. I think 2020 still reflects on the screen a pretty healthy picture, but the, the, the picture is really healthy because of the stakeholder engagements, um, our promise to return to rugby um, that kids kept sponsorship um, happy and at bay at times where we were to deliver rights where we did not play sufficient rugby. Um, and then our purely domestic um, competitions um, only sees us generating around 10% of it. And then of course, when we do have an event like the Cape Town Sevens, um, it does, uh, uh, and, and although not significant, it does generate income to kind of help us balance our books and get to that revenue mix um, that is optimal for an organization as the size of South African rugby. Um, just in terms of the broadcasting revenue, um, it's a bit of a multicolored slide. It shows the ups and downs. I think in 2019, we got into the levels that we were building on. Um, then came the, uh, the migration from Southern Hemisphere to Northern Hemisphere rugby. Um, we are out of uh, super Rugby and have migrated into the Pro 14 and then, of course, into the United Rugby Championships. Um, and, and again, uh, about 49% of that total income is directly attributable to the six Springbok test. Um, and then overall, 78% of that total broadcast comes from the Springbok's participation in the, the various competitions and, of course, uh, the franchise media rights for participation in um, in international competitions. Um, and I think that is all from my side. Um, so from the from the income side, um, so, so where do we balance the books? How do we get to that position of kind of a, a, a break even? Uh, South African rugby has been um, on a break even position for quite some time. We do not have the reserves. We do not have the, the necessary um, assets other than the IP that we can commercialize. So we spend about 55% of the total revenue in terms of our product, our, our rugby product, which is the actual cost of teams, but also the actual cost of uh, the teams traveling, participation in the, in the competitions. 
uh, we try to distribute um, in that in terms of our members um, having to deliver on on membership rights uh, we deliver we pay around 19 percent of the total amounts to member unions we spend around nine percent of that budget on governance and operations um, then we also have to secure the image rights of players in order to for us to to deliver on those commercial some of those commercial obligations uh, so six percent of that that amount is played uh, spent on this image rights and insurance and then uh, three percent on the actual direct cost of uh, hosting a Cape Town Sevens event, and then eight percent is really spread what I call you know the head office commercial cost, i.e., HR, finance, uh, office of the CEO, legal, etc., um, is spent um, to make sure that we bear the balanced uh, budget. And, and I think that is all from my side. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. We're not going to hand you over to you. Come again. I'm going to hand you over to Lynn Catwell, the, the head of uh, uh, to Charles. To Charles Vessel, the, the head of uh, the rugby department. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair. Good morning, Honorable Members. Honorable President, switch off your mic. Let me start again. Good morning, Honorable Chair. Good morning, Honorable Members. I'm Charles Vessels. I'm the General Manager for Rugby. I'm also doubling up as the Team Manager for the Springboks. As of today, uh, Honorable Chair, we are 541 days away from Rugby World Cup 2023 kicking off in Paris. That will open with a test between France and New Zealand. And two days later, on Sunday, the 10th of September, 2023, the Springboks will kick off their campaign against Scotland. But there's lots of activities between now and the kickoff uh, of Rugby World Cup 2023. During this year, it will see the Springboks playing 13 tests. Six of those tests would be at home and seven of those tests would be playing away. In July, we are hosting Wales for three tests to be played in Pretoria, Bloemfontein, and Cape Town. Then we are welcoming the New Zealanders to Nelspruit and to Johannesburg. And our final home match would be played against Argentina in, in Durban. But it will also see the Springboks traveling north uh, to the Northern Hemisphere to play against Ireland. France, Italy, and an additional test against England. So it's quite a busy year with 13 tests for 2022. In addition to those tests, we will have one or two camps, two alignment camps, one in April and one in May, where we will bring together our local base players and the coaches will take them through the expectations for this year uh, what will the plans be, our traveling plans, our logistical plans, how we are going to do it. For 2023, prior to kickoff um, of Rugby World Cup 2023, we will be playing six tests. Then we start off our campaign on the 10th of September in France for Rugby 2023. We hope in the Rugby World Cup 2023 that we will play seven matches, which means that we want to contest the finals on the 28th of October in Paris at Stade de France. And we hope the entire portfolio committee would be there in Paris on the 28th of October to support us donning the green and gold. So that is 2023. Now, we, we did fairly well this year. We've retained the number one spot as, a, as the Springbok team on the world rankings. Our sevens have done us proud. They are also retaining the number one position in the world rankings as the best uh, sevens team in the, in the world. And then over the weekend saw the Springboks probably making clean sweep with the awards held over the weekend. We took the award as Federation of the, of the Year. 
we took the award as uh, team of the year, the Springboks. Rassi Erasmus mm. took the coach of the year and both Makazola Mapimpi and Siamtanda Kolisi walk away with category awards. I think that indicates that we have performed fairly well over the last year or so. Now, I focused on World Cup 2023, but we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there's two other World Cup taking place. We are hosting the Sevens World Cup in Cape Town in September of this year. And then the Women's World Cup, which was initially scheduled to be played in 2021, will not be, because of COVID reasons, will now be played in New Zealand from October to November of this year. So basically, we are planning for two World Cups this year and then our 2023 World Cup next year. That's basically me done, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Again, yes, uh, yes. Um, I'm now going to hand over to, to Lynn Catwell, who heads up uh, the, the Women's High Performance Manager for Women's Rugby, Lynn. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Let me just put on my camera. Um, good morning to all members and thank you for the opportunity for speaking about um, women's rugby on this platform. I just want to speak for a couple of minutes to talk about the approach that uh, Saru are taking to the women's game uh, going forward. In 2019, women's rugby was shifted to the second strategic priority and as a result of it, um, our plans and, and our strategic thinking has have been aligning for the last couple of years if you want to move on to the next one. Um, but in order to explain our approach, uh, which I'll get to right at the end, I just want to give a little bit of a global context as to where women's sports sits in, in, in how we're operating at the moment and what does that look like in a South African context. Um, so women's rugby first appeared in the world back in the late 1800s and there's people in this room that would know an awful lot more than I do around when men's rugby appeared in the world and I think that was roughly relatively at the same time and the difference between the two time scales are that the women's game kind of disappeared for about 100 years and appeared again in 1982 and um, that was 40 years ago and that's pretty much when female rugby activity has has operated across the world and that happened between Netherlands and France and in general, rugby activity has been tracked uh, across World Cup cycles since then. And the sevens women's game, as well as the men's game appeared in, in the Olympics in 2016 for the first time. And we can talk about that a little bit more at the end. So if we zoom into what that looks like from a South African context, um, the first game, national representative game for the Springbok women 15s was in 2001. And the first test was in 2004, which is what makes it 20 years old. And then, as mentioned, if it's a lot of activity is tracked in World Cup cycle since then, um, from a rankings point of view, the, the women Springbok have finished 12th, 10th, um, and now sit at, at 13th ranking in the world. Um, and what we hope is for that to change the change going forward. Yep. So if we look to what that looks like presently, the Springbok Women 15s team, they're ranked 13 in the world. And to give you a sense of context and developmental story, uh, they've played 38 tests since that time, um, which will hopefully give you a sense of how much work needs to be done in order to, to provide opportunities for the girls to play more rugby so that they can aspire and that they can improve, which I think we all know that they can. Um, in the sevens game, they're ranked 12th in the world at the moment. They've played 23 tournaments um, since that time. They were badly affected through COVID where the program had to stop uh, where, as that has restarted again. And we're really excited to talk about this being 2022 and there's two World Cup campaigns, which is really an incredible opportunity for us to make the game as visible as possible and to inspire young six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-year-old girls that are going to watch it on TV and, and know that this is a game for them. We've got a home World Cup, obviously, that's been mentioned already in September, um, and that's an opportunity for us to really maximise the visibility of the game. So what does that look like at a, at a domestic level? Um, women's rugby in South Africa is, is very much a transformed 
sport. Um, if we look at the national team representation, 96% of the national 15s players are generic black players with 4% white players. At the sevens level, 61% of the sevens players are generic black players with 39% white players. The provincial unions, um, you can see the, the percentage of 95% of the players are generic black players with 5% white players. And the youth training centers, which, is, which, uh, which are centers that very much so um, benefit from the support from the Department of Sports and Culture, uh, their demographic breakdown is 70% 70, 70 are generic black players with 30% um, white players. And the youth training centers is practically our junior rugby uh, because the women's game doesn't have a formal primary or secondary school or, or high school uh, national competition, which is something we definitely want to focus on going forward. Uh, so to conclude, um, we've been consulting and uh, speaking a lot over the past year and a half since the game has been shifted to the second strategic priority and our women's rugby strategy is about to be launched over the next couple of weeks, which has five core pillars, um, which sit around leadership and culture. How do we create a system around, around girls that works for girls and um, that learns all of the IP that we have in SARU um, and apply that? Um, coaching will be a key key focus on, on how do we accelerate learning through good coaching and coaches creating a, 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 a learning environment for girls to learn. Uh, our, our high performance structures, which we spoke about, the development pathways, which will be essential, and how do we increase the visibility and commercial partnerships to, to increase funds and revenue into the game. Um, lovely. Thank you for the opportunity for speaking. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm going to hand you over to Mrs. Mimi Tao, who chairs the Transformation Committee. Mimi. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairperson, um, DG, and honorable members. Um, as introduced, I'm Mimi Tao. I'm currently a member of the Executive Council, and I'm also the Chairperson of the Transformation Committee. As you are aware that we've been at our lowest point in 2016, there's been significant progress since then. We now have MOAs and provincial performance agreements concluded to stage targets to 2030. We also have established incentive policy. We also have performance audited annually and targets successfully met uh, as presented by the DG. And we also have the Independent Transformation Advisory Panel, which has been established last year in 2021. And uh, we have the members of this uh, Transformation Advisory Panel, uh, Ms. Mosekiwa, who is the chairperson and also the independent ESCO member. Myself, uh, as the chairperson of the Transformation Committee, uh, Ms. Muta Ting, and we also have the judge, uh, Mr. Johan van der Westenzen. We have also structures uh, that are there to really deal with discrimination issues, uh, which is the external support, the my player. So each professional team has a dedicated senior player representative uh, charged with identifying matters impacting on players, including transformation and discrimination is indicated. We have a 24 seven helpline in operation for professional uh, players. Uh, we've also designed to assist with social stresses and challenges faced by players. Uh, and, and of critical importance, we have Sports Employee Unite, SEU, which is really a trade union representing industry employees. Um, this is also one of the supporting structure, the industry support, the South African Rugby Employers Association, uh, which regulates relations with uh, employers. And it elected its first black chairperson, which is uh, Tando Manana in 2021. And uh, he's been the, uh, the vice chair since 2019. This facilitates the orderly settlement of disputes. It also assists members on matters affecting their relationship with employees. But most of all, it promotes, supports, or opposes any proposed measures that may affect uh, uh, everyone within the organization. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stau. Uh, I'm now going to go back to, 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 to the, Mr. Vessels, the of the Ranking Department. Honorable Chair, again, I think you won't mind me on behalf of the South African Rugby Union to thank the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture for their contribution to make this uh, very exciting uh, program possible. Uh, the fast tracking of black coaches started off with us calling for nominations from the provinces. We received 101 nominations and we put those 101 nominations through various exercises. We have reduced that 101 coaches to 15 who are now on a very uh, intensive uh, coaching program to actually build their capacity and develop them. Uh, we are in negotiations with a tertiary institution to actually accredit the program that the coaches are on. Some of these coaches on the program, 15 coaches on the program are currently leading uh, varsity, uh, varsity teams. They are currently assistant coaches with franchises. And we hope that through this program, they would put up their hand, uh, put them in good stead actually to put up their hands in order to take the reins as head coaches uh, when positions come to the fore. Thank you, thank you, Charles. Uh, the administrative development, in partnership with Supersport, we um, put it together a program at uh, the Gordon Institute of Business. It's almost like a mini MBA, but it's focused more around sporting issues. And we have a group of, of uh, we started off with rugby and, and, and PSL, but it's now been extended to, uh, to, uh, to hockey and um, netball and, and soccer as well. And this is just to upskill the, the, the people, uh, the, the, the so-called uh, 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 black executives in the unions to get them to a level where they could actually take control or, or, or be appointed as CEOs going forward. And this will be an ongoing program with Supersport Review We'll take different groups through this program every year. They will be visiting universities in, in, in the USA and as well as in the UK, uh, in Europe. So, so the, this is quite an intense program. And, uh, and uh, uh, there's a number of, of, of PSL uh, execs as well as uh, uh, Cricket South Africa as well as um, uh, hockey. So it's a very intense program and that's our program to, to fast track uh, um, uh, our, our officials. Uh, next, we'll uh, I'll, I'll get, uh, ask uh, Samantha McDonald, who will take us through the program. program. Morning, everybody. So, SR Rugby 100% supports BE, and it's um, imper it's imperative for us. We are currently a level two, and we strive to be a level four better. Of our 26 rugby entities, 24 are BE compliant. We are 92% with valid B certificates. And through our transformation advisory panel, we constantly ensure that they are BE compliant and they meet that a level four or higher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. And then I'm going to ask the head of uh, compliance, uh, Vanessa Dobel, to take us to the women in rugby. Vanessa? Thank you, Mr. President, Madam Chair, DG, Honorable Members, good morning. Over the last few years, SRIP has made huge strides in ensuring the inclusion of women in all governance structures. In June 2021, we amended Chair the Pesson. federal constitution you to enable the meaningful inclusion of women within our Vanessa governance structures. President, First, we made provision for an additional seat for women Vanessa, candidates Vanessa, and the General Vanessa. Council. And this Vanessa, member is the highest decision-making body within the This means that we immediately Vanessa, opened up the space for an additional 14 women to join the Vanessa, general council. I'll show your face. Second, we increased the representation of extra President. members to include a minimum of three women up until 2025. Vanessa. Now, members from 2025, no Thank one gender can Thank exceed you, another gender by more than three. Yeah. Hello, this Vanessa. effectively means that Vanessa. in 2025, we could have an executive council that has eight women and six Ms. men, or vice versa. Mrs. Dobble, Mrs. Dobble, <laughs> Vanessa. Hello, madam. You have been requested to show your face. Thank you, Mr. Mayedo. 
Vanessa, can, can you hear me now? We want you to show your face firstly and then uh, take I off can. the video. We didn't know who's speaking. We didn't show your face. Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Please start again, because we've been calling you. That's why we couldn't listen, because we we're making noise, saying that, please show your face. Can you start okay, again? Madam Chair, you can start it again, okay. please. Okay. Should I start from the top, Madam Chair? Yes. You can switch off now your video. We've seen this beautiful Duki, beautiful Mbogodwa. Start again. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, Madam Chair, DG, honorable members, good morning. Over the last few years, SA Rugby has made huge strides in ensuring the inclusion of women in all our governance structures. In June 2021, we amended the SARU Constitution to enable the meaningful inclusion of women within these structures. Firstly, we made provision for an additional seat for a woman candidate on the General Council. Now, members, this is the highest decision making body within SA Rugby. This means, with immediate effect, we effectively opened up the space for an additional 14 women to join the General Council. Secondly, Madam Chair, we increased the representation of EXCO members to include a minimum of three women up until 2025. Now, members from 2025, no one gender can exceed the other gender by more than three. This effectively means that we could have an executive council that has eight women and six men or vice versa. But in order to support this intervention and other diversity focused interventions, we launched the SA Rugby Women in Sports Initiative in August last year. This is a leadership pipeline initiative that aims to provide women within the broader rugby community with an opportunity to assume leadership position. It focuses on mentoring, training, networking, and leadership opportunities while ensuring that at SA Rugby, we maintain an organizational culture and environment that is open, diverse, and inclusive. Through this initiative, Madam Chair and members, we have reached over 400 women in our rugby structures. Madam Chair, members, in various sectors, we often we assume that we know what women want to develop their leadership capability. But at SA Rugby, we are really clear about our strategic intent to ensure that we take women along this journey with us. Through surveys and engagement sessions, we have developed an aligned approach with women in our rugby community to craft their leadership journey. And in so doing, we believe that we are creating an innovative leadership pipeline. Some of these programs include the mentorship training and the Women Moving Women Forward program. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Chairperson. The next uh, slide uh, just shows us the, the, the demographic makeup of SARU. As you can see on our executive, 60% uh, of our, our, uh, our makeup of the executive is 60%. The SARU committee is at 92%. The full-time employee is at 69%. The demographics of senior management is 50-50. The percentage of uh, senior of, of senior women in senior management is 25%. Our referees panel is 50-50. The national coaches is 80-20. National assistant coaches is 57%. And all our national team management, 85% of that is black. That is just the makeup of our national teams and assistant coaches and our referees panel. So you can see the chairperson, the, the, the slide that the DG presented was uh, 2019 figures. We're now in 2022, and, and, and there's a big change ever since that last uh, 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 EPG report. Also, there were certain things on the EPG report that we had corrected with the minister and the DG, and I think uh, what the DG showed was, was uh, he showed our achievements and not our targets. So, so the numbers are wrong there, but that's, that's it means it's, 
there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, national team leadership, and there's the makeup. Out of all our teams, uh, Chairperson, I think only one team is not chaired by a, a so-called black person. And you see there, the, there's under 20 women and under 18 it was it's, it's blocked out because there was no competition over the period to date, Chairperson. Chairperson, so I think that brings us to the end of our, uh, our, uh, our presentation and we, we would like to answer any questions you'd like to ask. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, President, honorable members. Uh, I'm seeing that uh, I'm not biased. Uh, this is one entity seemingly uh, they've prepared when they are uh, coming here. Uh, I'm seeing that everybody is taking part and, and now does assist us now uh, to ask questions, to fill, ask them to fill gaps that we are seeing uh, where there are gaps, but uh, the, the presentation is so informative. Um, I'm having uh, Honorable Mshlongo, Honorable Veronica, Honorable- Chairperson, I was- Chairperson, my hand was up before Mr. Honorable Mshlongo. Mine was- No, no. Give me a chance to chair the, the meeting, the uh, honorable member, because when now I'm open, I've seen this, uh, we are going to talk anyway. Please, honorable members, give me a chance to chair. Uh, honorable Mshongo, honorable Veronica, honorable Adams, honorable CBC, honorable Zondi, in that order. Cheers. Come again, Honorable Denise, yes. Honorable Mshong. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, uh, Chair, welcome the presentation and I can see that everybody has participated. In other words, the president is listening to us. I remember when he came in 2017, when I started uh, in the committee, mm -hmm. he was the only person who was speaking. Uh, Mr. President, we mm -hmm. congratulate your team, honestly enough. Uh, it's impressive for involvement of other members. And Chairperson, let me go to the actual presentation. SAG was an excellent records. They've received awards. SIA, Mampi, Mampi, everything is clean. There's, there's a record of transformation with the EPG, which I don't support. President, who is Zef Maria? You've just told us that he came unnoticed in our meeting. Why was he suspended? Tell us more about Zef. Chairperson, Rabi has won the best national federation in South Africa, but they have a CEO which is questionable. One of the comments that I wanted to make, rewarding corruption is becoming a sad way in the life of sports in South Africa. South African Rabi is aware that the matter is so important. They've issued a statement yesterday and Chairperson, can you forgive me? The member that I'm talking with, he's on the platform. Can I, we ask him to recuse himself? The CEO, uh, Mr. Rox, can I ask the Chairperson? Because I'm going to ask pertaining questions and he's on the platform. If you allow me, he, Chair. Uh, uh, he'll be leaving. Just hang on. Um, give us a minute. Sorry, Chairperson. You can carry on. Uh, 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 Honorable President, I'm not, I didn't give you the, the platform. Uh, Honorable Mshongo, uh, as you are still contributing, we don't know why are you saying that he must be excused. So okay. we'll hear I from uh, the, the, the colleagues. We, we, can, we cannot just do that. Ask no questions problem. and then we'll do debate and then we'll hear from uh, the president. Uh, I'm suspecting some of the questions that I was saying to Honorable Dennis, uh, we need this platform to be updated. So let's not excuse people here who, while we don't know what is that, okay. uh, let alone uh, what we are saying, ask questions, Honorable Member. 
Thank you very much. Uh, apology, Chair. I, I apologize. Uh, Chair, the, 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 you, the Federation yesterday issued a statement, and it's pertaining to the statement that I've received, and obviously it's on the media uh, regarding the CEO. That's why I wanted him to be excused. But nonetheless, let me continue with my question, Chairperson. Chairperson, was uh, a, a, a rugby union aware of the matter which they've issued a statement yesterday before they hire Mr. Rox? If yes, why did they go ahead? Or if no, can they tell us why did they hire him with the cloud behind him? Did he disclose this matter before the executive or the board during for them in the process of hiring him? Who is paying for the legal fees pertaining to the issue that I'm talking about? Chairperson, why is Rabi doing this, especially if we know that this matter is of importance, especially in the Federation. What is Saru doing about Ms., uh, Mr., uh, the CEO fraud case? What are they doing about it? The statement I read it yesterday, but what are they doing about it? This action for us to pretend that things are not happening. For an example, what is this organization action? What are they going to take part? Because there's a court arbitration judgment against their own CEO, which today he even didn't participate. Amazingly, the CEO did not participate in the presentation, but every member participated. You question that. Why have they not taken action against the CEO? Why have they not taken action against the high court uh, uh, outcome? Let me move away from the issue because it's an emotional issue. Chairperson, out of, according to the presentation, the same 54 staff members, uh, staff are female, 54%. What is the make of 54%? What is the make of 54% for female staff? Can I get the actual, uh, the make, how many whites, how many Indians, how many blacks, the makes of the 54 staff members who are on the payroll? You know, going back to this issue, uh, yes, CEO Chairperson, you ask yourself several questions. Uh, the time when it comes, the executive have been quiet. Now, do, do we have, uh, can I ask maybe, to have a fair policy in Saru? Others are suspended, others are not suspended. What is the policy on Saru? One of the things that I wanted to find out, uh, the box, uh, we lost the test mesh in June. And I can tell you, when we lose any test mesh, the coach is out. They will fire a coach or something will happen. They will show a coach a dog, but their own CEO is still there and there's a cloud. You question that, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, uh, Mr. President, can you maybe uh, take us into your confidence? You did not present this, we know, but this is an uh, issue of importance. It's on the media, you've issued a statement and I'll come up with your presentation after hearing exactly. You know, I question the presentation when you go into details. There's money allocated. It's roughly 4.5 million from the department. I don't see any breakdown financial out of 4,005 million. How much have been spent on Women's Federation? There's no clear guiding on your presentation. How much was it spent on, on as, as the allocation is done? Now, Chairperson, the, the minister is not here. And you question that because this federation is most of a federation important that the minister will break. The EPG is not working. I can put it to you, Chairperson. The EPG, the measurement that we are talking about, it's not working. You cannot say transformation is halabaloo, it's mud in this federation. I, 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 I have a different view. The EPG, it's not working. For us to see transformation, we must have rugby school sports. We must have sports in different locations, Emakasi, Emakaya, Eben communities, not only in the uh, suburban areas. But nonetheless, for now, let me stop. I'll go to the actual presentation. I'll get a second bite. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Honorable Shongo. Honorable Veronica. Thank you, Chair. I just want to start by saying I think I detect a little bit of favoritism towards um, Honorable Ndlongo. <laughs> That's just a, a joke, Chairperson. I first want to start by saying that I think thank you for the presentation. I think, in general, Saro is doing a good job. 
Um, the Springboks were the team of the year at the South African Sport Awards 2021. Rasi Erasmus was, was coach of the year. And the South African Rugby Union was National Federation of the Year. And I think congratulations is in order. Um, then my questions are as follow. Um, I also personally want to know if the president can give us uh, the background on the case between the CEO and the University of Stellenbosch. Um, it is in the media domain, public domain, and it also the, it says that uh, Sarskog um, is uh, is paying uh, or is involved with um, um, getting input from strong legal a strong legal team. So, um, what is the impact on Sardo? and um, maybe also why have you been quiet on the issue um, according to the media reports? My second question is. What, in your opinion, defines or is part of transformation? Is it primarily the representation of Black versus White, white South Africans in teams and management? And um, can you maybe tell us what about training, playing facilities, and access to opportunities, resources, and so forth? My second uh, question, is, or third question is, given your challenges, specifically with transformation on provincial and national and international levels, Whose responsibility is it to identify, develop, and nurture uh, talent at the junior and intermediary um, this, the, its, um, club levels and make sure that the required facilities, opportunities, and re resources are available? Are there uh, um, adequate facilities and resources to monitor those with talent and to do proper career planning and to manage talented sportsmen and women? What are your and the state's responsibilities respective, respectively? And are both parties adequately contributing to this? And maybe the department can also come in on that. Um, if I, we can also get the view from the department on, on this issue. Um, my last question is um, that I did not find any safeguarding policy on your website. Um, where do possible abuse victims lay complaints in this regard? And I can tell you the last two federations that were uh, coming to the committee, boxing and um, softball, both of them, boxing didn't even know what safeguarding is, and softball apparently also didn't have problems. And two weeks ago, uh, two, honorable um, funded, um, I was having a call from the, the office. They are asking me that. Uh, I must also ask members to firstly show their face and then switch off the, the mic. Similarly, you didn't show your face. Okay. <laughs> this is this beautiful face, honorable members <laughs> and our guests. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. <laughs> the, the signal this side, I mean, the, the Northern Cape <laughs> on the farm, the signal is very poor. <laughs> So uh, I just want to come back yes. to the, the, this issue of safeguarding. It's very important because we had two suicide attempts last previous Friday in softball. And there's also huge abuse uh, amongst young boys in boxing. But both of these federations, they're not even aware of this. So for me, it's very important that this issue is also um, addressed in all sport federations. So if you can just give me feedback on that. Thank you very much. And can, can also remind the members that we have got an agenda of today, things that we have seen in the media. Some of us were waiting for this forum to ask Saru and the, depart the department in Saru and come and brief us. So I'm worried that if other members, they will follow the suit of Honorable Mklongo, you will take us out of our agenda. We're not defending anyone, but let's stick to our agenda. And the president, if uh, he felt that he can answer, I don't have any problem, but I'm worried because when I'm starting the meeting, I've said we want a full detail on what Honorable Dennis raised. So I'm, I'm, uh, I wanted just that I, I must give direction in, in, in a committee meeting. Uh, why are we here? And the, fortunately, this committee has got a department, has got entity department, and Saru, uh, I'm proposing, would love that you must come and report and give us a fully fledged re report. Uh, we cannot rely on the media, which you have just sent statement there without 
each department and your good self-reporting into this committee. That's my proposal uh, to the next uh, members. I thank you. The next person in, in the, in the uh, it was Honorable Adams in that order. Thank you, Chairperson. I will switch off my video now. Thank you. We've seen a beautiful face, a well dressed. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Let me also uh, join the other members by welcoming um, the presentation and good morning to all on the platform. Chairperson, my question is how is the current closure of Stadia affecting the finance within the rugby union? Are there any threats to employment or income? The annual report shows that around 2,800 secondary schools offer rugby as a sporting coat. How many of these schools are in townships? And Chairperson, given the seriousness of the charges found by the court against the CEO, what is the next step that Saru will be taken? My last question, the transformation report shows that Saru must itself self set transformation target for the senior men men's team, as well as the women senior sevens team. What were the challenges around missing the targets? I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Adams, Honorable CBC. Greetings to the uh, honorable members <clears throat> and also greetings to the rugby uh, fraternity and the chairperson. So, chairperson, uh, I've got uh, to compliment the rugby union because for me, that is the only code that has been, it's the only code that has been doing very well and I've been fighting for the development of school sport for quite some time and i've seen that rap is doing well when it comes to the development of school sport and the, their participation is very good but my concern is what is rap going to do for what is the rap going to do for the development of rural areas can the chair, can the president consider the rural development and i thank you chair Thank you, Honorable uh, CBC, Honorable Sondi. Thanks, Chair. Uh, good uh, morning to the Honorable Members uh, and uh, our visitors. We welcome the report, Chair. A few questions uh, from, the, uh, from the team. Uh, the department chair has uh, been allocating. Uh, honorable member, uh, we are not sure whether you have ETV or whoever. There are people who are talking behind you. Now. It's not me, chair. Not me. Okay. Okay. Whoever was doing this, it's with us in this platform. Go on, Honorable Zondi, thank you. Thanks, Chair. I'm saying the department has been allocating funds to SARU to assist with the development of a program of school rugby and women uh, rap, among others. However, SARU has been underspending the funds allocated uh, by the department, Chair. Uh, if, 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 if you remember the 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 their financial uh, status um, uh, from 2019 uh, to date, uh, you will notice that there's also been a gradual decline of funds allocated to Saru between 2018 and 2021. Now, Chair, I want to know what has been the reason for the underspending of funds. 
with the exception of the, the expenditure of the COVID-19, but their allocation of funds uh, uh, directly to the to the to their programs, not uh, COVID-19. The second one, Chair, is the liquidation of the Southern Kings. That leaves a gap in terms of the development in the professional rap in the Eastern Cape in particular. What led to the eventual liquidation of Southern Kings? And what is uh, Saru doing to ensure that the franchise rap uh, 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 continues uh, to take place in the Eastern Cape? As we all know that uh, Eastern Cape is one of the strongest hold, uh, 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 rap strongholds in the country. Chair, uh, with regards to a, a transformation, Chair, I want to commend the, the, the Saru. Uh, women Rapi are doing very well in terms of uh, demographics uh, or transformation, uh, demographics of the country or transformation in general. Uh, however, I just want to know, uh, are they getting enough exposure, these um, a, a women, a, a, a national a, a, a teams? And what measures is Saru taking to reduce the gap, the, 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 the gap which is large on the remun uh, remuneration uh, between male and female rapid national? Um, I just want to know uh, what measures are they, are, they, are, they, are they taking as a federation? The last one, Chair, is the issue of the uh, the steroid. What is the federation doing to minimize or combat high prevalence uh, of steroid use and abuse among high school rap in particular, high school rap layers? And what I what is the 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 what is Saru? How is Saru? Uh, their relationship with the South African Institute of, of Drugs uh, 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 and Substance. Uh, how is their relationship? Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you for the opportunity. And I want to thank uh, Saru for the presentation. And I want to say that rugby is, is the pride. We have to say it. All sport coaches are trying their best on international level. But rugby has carried us, uh, kept us on the map, chairperson. Um, so it's very important. Um, um, but I want to congratulate Saru for the achievements on the field. But it appears in a boardroom and in the management structures is not going well. Hence, I've asked your guidance, Chairperson, before, after we agreed on the agenda, and thank you for your guidance, but I know this issue was unavoidable, the issues that's in the media. Um, I'm covered by, by the previous members' concerns. I just want to say that the points that Saru must come and account on at, at an uh, opportunity that is suitable, uh, Chairperson, is this news that has been ongoing in the newspaper. And the, the interesting part that I want to raise, which they should account on uh, at a suitable time, is that with one person, they, they don't have a constitution, it seems to me. They don't have policies, there's a plenty of procedures. And with another person, they treat it, the person differently. Um, there the is discrepancies. And the other issue that they must come and account on is what we want to know is this uh, Newland Stadium and Cape Town Stadium and what's happening in the Western Cape. Because by their own admission, they've agreed, they've indicated that the clubs are declining from 1662 to 1145 between 217 and 219. It's a, it's a decline and, and, and these underlying leadership management board issues is contributing uh, to that uh, chairperson. And, and if, we, if Saru doesn't sort it out, I think the, the Western Cape will go back to what Sakos did to the apartheid government. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have normal sport in an abnormal society. And at the moment, the board is in an abnormal situation. And there's no fairness and there's ill treatment um, 
uh, different treatment for, for different people. And I'm not sure, I don't want to be in the calling because some is white and some is not white, but that is, that is what, what, what I pick up. So I appreciate your guidance this year, but that's the points I just wanted to place on the table that Saru must give an account on at the, at the appropriate time. My question in terms of the uh, presentation chairperson, um, I would like to know if women are contracted players and they get, if they get equal pay to the men in sport. And I'm pleased to hear the progress at, 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 at women uh, in the rugby, but you know, our tradition of men domination and, and, and struggling to bring equality is, is, an, is an issue even in rugby. So on sports in particular, so I'm asking that question. I also want to know in transformation, um, what is the target? What is the time frame in terms of what we want to, what is Saru's targets and what is their time frame? Um, uh, uh, because we, we are more than 20 years into democracy and we are, I think, still struggling with, with some issues. I also want to know, uh, even with the coaches, what the previous coaches are contributing you know, in other sports, if you were a coach and you step out, uh, outside, they change uh, to a new coach, that is valuable experience information that we can't just throw down the drain. We must bring that people into the, the mainframe of taking sports forward, particularly disadvantage uh, history that we had in, in rugby. Because rugby was like, was like another religion uh, to other religions um, in South Africa. Person, I uh, would like to ask, um, apart from Craven Week and other tournaments, what, what other tournaments are there apart from Craven Week here for the schools so that we can promote um, schools, uh, schools rugby? Um, my question, Chairperson, on, on the, on the, I have noted the, on the EP, EPG matters, the, the demographics between male and senior, there was a quotation of, of of 61% white and the coach referee 54% white, 31 black and 19 colored. It's either percentage or the numbers. So I just need what what is the plan around that? Um Jefferson and then I want to just round up by asking on the transformation part. Um, it was a very broad statement by Mimi, but what is the time frame and the targets on transformation? As I said earlier, I want to know. Under the South African Rugby Employees Association, uh, they made mention about they they there to dis facilitate disputes. I would like to know what kind of disputes uh, uh, are they are they dealing with, and how different is that to um, to, to to taking it to disciplinary matters uh, if necessary. And then my last um, question, or second last question, Chairperson is. The, on the uh, uh, triple uh, B, double E level, they, they, they indicated they're on level two. So I want to know what is the difference between level two and level four and why are we not moving to, to the other levels? And then my last question, Chairperson, on the demographics of, uh, which was shown in the slide on how well we are doing with, with integration and or diversity rather, sorry. But I noted on the senior management level, Chairperson, there is a 50-50 uh, 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 situation. So I would like to know why on the senior management level is there 50-50? Is it by agreement or is it by a lack of skills when they're dealing with the appointment process? Because I find that very interesting. Because at the senior management level chairper, chairperson, that is where the power is and the decision-making power. So why is, that, uh, is there a compromise on 50-50 percent there? Thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Honorable Mama Mulu. Yeah. Thank you, Chairperson. Are you able to see me now? Hello. So I'm fine Are you in now, the stadium? Are you in the stadium, Honorable Mama Mulu? No, no. I'm in my study room. <laughs> no, okay. I don't think that uh, when we're coming to Parliament, we're in the Parliament, we must, we must dress I put on our T-shirts. Uh, I uh, I'm sorry to to tell you this story. One other time in this Parliament of South Africa, we yeah. were launching. A, listen, we were launching something which was very important. Then the ministers they did come 
in a plenary after that launch with t-shirts. Uh, the whip then it was honorable Pam Tread. She uh -huh. had to chase, chase them out to go and dress properly. Uh, I'm suspecting yeah. we can dress like yourself when we are in the stadium. But when in a committee a room meeting, we need to be presentable. But we cannot say now go and change. Uh, I, I want that uh, honorable members, they must note that when uh, we are coming to the committee, we must be presentable. I know that we are loving people of sport. Uh, this is a uh, Safa's t shirt, it's part of uh, us. We yeah, are no, sports no. people. <laughs> we are sporting we are people. Safa, Saru, ah, SA, they're all our kids. We should be oh, still supporting please. our kids. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you At very least much. If you uh, put a, jack, a jacket, you will be honorable. <laughs> Thank no, you. We should be supporting our federations, Chair. Uh, it's you. fine. The first point will be around um, <clears throat> the presentation from the department. Uh, DG, you spoke about the tripartite agreement that you have with them, with uh, uh, SARU and uh, the Department of Education, but you do not elaborate much around that because I'm worried about. Uh, um, us seeing rugby in schools and so on. I think uh, most other members did indicate that concern that we are not seeing rugby in townships and uh, villages. On women in rugby, uh, Chairperson, I'm very impressed because I can see that even 54% of the staff, um, it is on their payroll and uh, they are doing well there. They are also doing well in transformation. We have been raising the concerns. In transformation, I'm also happy that uh, they're, they're, they've got um, this program for black coaches, which is uh, doing well. The program on um, BEEE -E -E, and also women in rugby. I'm also impressed, Chairperson. President of Saru, uh, with regard to the preparation for the World Cup, uh, you are saying the finals are going to be held on the 28th of October 2023. I've got confidence um, in my book, book. They've never disappointed us. I'm just trying to check if um, do we still have uh, a young team or are we going to retain the same team that we, ha we had in uh, 2019? Uh, are you having a transformation program? Maybe to have younger players? Because I can see that um, some of them are uh, graduating from the team. Do you have a plan for, for next year? Yeah, just next year. Ne? 2023 next year, because in 2019, Chairperson attended on our behalf. This time I'm happy where I'll be attending there in France. I'll be go Paris, supporting the team. <laughs> I can see that in your pool, we have Scotland and Ireland. These are the weakest uh, teams, and then you are awaiting the other two nations. So I want to check if uh, do you have uh, a plan around the squad so that we don't, uh, we, 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 we don't get a completely new team when we go to the World Cup next year. On the demographics, I'm happy that you have got, uh, we, you have a uh, um, sixty percent of black people on the exco and also on the uh, committee chairpersons, full time employees and uh, demographics. So basically, you are doing well, um, um, Comrade President. Just that you also need courage and support from us as the committee, South Africans and also department uh, chairperson. Thank you very much. Ne? Yeah, level. Thank you, Honorable Mamambula. I um, also uh, want to thank the department uh, with uh, their presentation and also with the uh, RAPI. As one uh, Honorable Member indicated when I was saying that I'm impressed about your way of presenting uh, let alone that the, this president, it's, he is hands on. Everyone who, when he, he or she is presenting, he, he does elaborate. But at least an improvement of involvement of all uh, uh, people in the Saru that when they are coming here, they must play a, a role. Also, some of us, uh, we are aware where we are coming from, from uh, sports at large. 
And now Rabi, uh, we know the history of Rabi. When um, Gigi was saying that they've achieved 84% uh, on the transformation in EPG, we encourage and we are pleased to hear that uh, maybe also let's congratulate you again on, on awards that uh, you have shown also us in when the awards were given, the number that you did get as a rabbi, uh, that uh, this EPG and this transformation, you are trying, you are doing well, you are not yet there. So we are encouraging you that keep up the good work. But also, uh, what other honorable members raised, uh, they were not out of order. Uh, would love, and I'm proposing in this forum openly as this is, it is, that uh, I will sit with the, the, the office to look at uh, the date that we must call you back, because uh, we do have some things that we want uh, to engage in department and your good self. For instance, this question uh, of uh, Isaru and of I Iboda Rabi, the question of I I Western Cape problems in Rabi, and uh, I'm suspecting that those they must be part of an immediate meeting that we will be calling you to come and uh, report to us about the litigations that we are having, uh, cases that are on, others are about to be finalized. We, we do see in the media every now and then, but the, the one of yesterday, uh, we all see in the media being a committee uh, that uh, are, are looked at in each and everything which is happening. But we, we want to give you a, a slot for that. And I will, I will as well here, I will check with the, with the office in, in, in the program that we are having. Uh, let alone that is a very tight program. That's why it was set, was set yesterday and tomorrow and Friday. It's, it's abnormal, it's not normal uh, in this parliament that there's a committee who sits about three days uh, in a week. It's because of the uh, lo load of work in this committee. So that's why I'm saying that whoever raised the, 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 the issue of the CEO, uh, which your good self, uh, you, you is, issue the, uh, the statement yesterday, as this committee to your department, we want uh, uh, information, what is going on, and to Usaru and your good self will create space that you must come and, and, and brief us the, stab, uh, the stability in the Western Cape Rabi governances. That's why other members are talking about the stadium. These are an outstanding issues uh, that as this committee, uh, I'm saying on behalf of the committee, will check and will check your availability because we are up and down uh, you are aware that you were supposed to come one other date. Uh, you asked not to, to come, you agreed on this day. So uh, out of this uh, meeting, my office will interact with your office in order that you must see which day and date that you must come back uh, in, the, in, the, in the committee. And uh, I'm suspecting 
the department is going to do that to call you. And then when we are coming, uh, we, we want to be briefed what, what is going on. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, some of us, we are seeing a progress in rugby after so many years. So you're still not there. This question of uh, women, we've seen, uh, you have been not even you, Rabbi, taking uh, care of our girls. Uh, we've seen it started in, 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 in Banyana Banyana, and now we are seeing that you, uh, Rabbi Saru, you are following the suit and they are doing well. And then uh, you will tell us furthermore, what are you doing uh, more than that you are doing with the girls? Uh, in that uh, note, we, can you answer the questions and then we'll take follow up questions, I thank you. <coughs> President. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, can I ask a favor? Can we can we deal with the with the with the CEO CEO question first? Because he's, I asked him to leave the meeting and, and I need him for the other questions because he is the head of the administration in the organization. Can I deal with the CEO and complete that one first, and then we'll, I'll go to all the other questions straight after that, Chairperson. Uh, we are giving you that you must uh, arrange your team. Now the platform is yours. Uh, until you have said you have finished, uh, the platform is yours. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, just on the issue of the CEO, uh, Mr. Ru was, em was employed by Saro in 2010 as CEO of the, of the union. At that point in time, there were no allegations of any legal action against him when he was appointed. Three years later, after doing excellent service at Saro, Mr. Ru advised the president and I at the time about the legal action while we were in Paris, November 2013. 20, on the 20th of November that year, there was a press statement here put out by the president, then president, Mr. Hoskins and Mr. Ru. Our legal, uh, legal uh, uh, company that we used, the Clerk and the Grindle, approached the Cape Bar and uh, advocate uh, Suzanne Harvey for an opinion regarding the proposed suspension of the CEO. And just taking out, I'm not going into the whole thing and we can provide the next things to your office. A response was, I'm of the view based on the information available to me, it is pres presently premature to suspend the employee. At our first meeting in 2014, the present, Mr. Hoskins had a legal opinion that he got uh, via our attorney from Advocate Yenis, senior counsel. Unfortunately, Advocate Yenis was also a director at Stellenbosch University, so we got a second opinion. At that time, the executive then took a decision that we will wait for the case to unfold, and we'll make a decision at the point in time when there's, there's the, 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 the case has come to a resolution. We then took that decision to our attorneys to look at two things. One, did we apply of additional responsibility? And two, have we applied with corporate governance? And we also got supporting documentation from the legal team about that. That decision was then taken to our general counsel on the 14th of August, 2014, where the president presented it to the general counsel for ratification, as well as the extension of Mr. Roos contract for 2021. In 2016, there was again a lot of noise around uh, this, this thing, because it was going from public to post uh, uh, this case. And then we engaged uh, uh, the com uh, com uh, legal company for an opinion. An opinion was provided and they said, the, as we continue waiting until the resolution of the case before we can take any further action. You also want to remember, Chairperson, this did not happen in Saru. It happened at the previous employee. 
In 2019, the executive extended Mr. Roos' contract by another four years. In 2020, it was agreed between the, the, the complainant and the defendant to go to arbitration, and arbitration started at the beginning of 2020. On the 20th, 23rd of December that year, the arbitration ruled against Mr. Roof. We then called an exec meeting on the 24th, and we appointed a committee to deal with this matter, a subcommittee. We appointed the chairman of a remuneration committee, who is an independent person, who is also a CEO of a, of a large company, we have, uh, as well as the audit and risk chairperson, who is the CFO of a large organization. The other person on the committee was uh, um, our finance committee chairperson, who was also a member of, uh, who was the chairman and the director of a large listed company, and myself and the deputy president to deal with the matter. In January, the CEO advised the executive of his appeal on the outcome. We took it to our attorneys to gain check what is our next step. And again, it was put out uh, to, 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 to wait until the end of the, the thing. All of 2021, the case was, uh, was, was run on appeal. And in December again, the 15th of December, uh, 2021, the outcome of the case where the, the, the appeal was lost by Mr. Roof. As you know, in, 20, uh, in, in, in South Africa, from the 15th of December to the 15th of January, uh, South Africa comes to an halt. We then had the first meeting with our attorneys, and we got the two best legal minds in the country looking at it. We had a meeting on the 26th for them to tell us what are the options available to us. In the process of getting the options available, we advised on the on uh, on the um, on the seventh uh, of, uh, of of February about um, the case going to the constitutional court. And there's a group of attorneys that is, were, were questioning the, the principle because it sets a precedent to any other director in any other organization. So now it, we have there was an exchange of letters between Mr. Ruse's attorney and our and, and, and ourselves. In turn, we're giving it to our attorneys. We received a response back on Monday, and our attorneys are going to come back with the final uh, uh, process of what, what are the options available to Saru. Because this is not a cut and dry thing like you work for Saru, there's other options we have to take and we have to follow due process. So we'll wait for our attorneys to come back, and we will follow whatever the attorneys advise us. We can only go on the advice of our legal team because this is just not a normal suspension. Sarah wasn't sitting on his hands. We, we were monitoring this thing throughout, and we have reported back in the media. It's not like we kept quiet. We reported back into the media. We haven't reported back in the detail that these people would like it to be, but it, you know, you've you got an employee employer relationship here, and one has to be careful that way we overstep our mark. So that's where we are as far as Mr. Roos' case, uh, Chairperson. So, Chairperson, if you mind. In, if it's, in in that point, uh, there is an allegation also, I can say allegation by members saying that uh, you suspended other member, uh, and then I'm suspecting it's the member that you was charted out. If you can uh, talk to that also in order that uh, now I'll, I'll, I will try to talk to the members about an immediately e committee meeting because now you, you are telling us that we are waiting the results and responses of your attorneys. But there's another question related to this that um, do, you, do you have police? But if you have police, you treated uh, other people differently. They've mentioned honorable members, the, 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 the board member who just get in and then you ask that he ma must be released. What is the situation with that one? Again, Chairman, I mentioned in when I started that this is not something that happened in Saru. And there are previous incidents where Gareth has something similar. You cannot, we cannot deal with something just suspending 
or something that happened at another organization a couple of years before he was employed by Saru. You know, when he was employed, there was no allegations. Insofar as the paying of the bills of this thing, this is Mr. Roos' case. He's got, Saru pays nothing to what Mr. Mr. Roos bills. What we are paying for is, is paying for our, our, our advice we're getting from the attorneys. We don't pay for Mr. Roos' uh, uh, legal, uh, legal fees uh, capacity. And the case, as far as uh, the, 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 the other person mentioned, Chairperson, firstly, they were suspended. They were suspended. The whole executive was suspended of Western province because they got themselves into trouble financially, Chairperson. You know, unfortunately, our, our constitution only allows us to step into any of our members once they're in financial problems. They, they had financial problems and they couldn't fund the organization. At that point in time, we stepped in as per our constitution, we stepped in and suspended them. But while they were suspended as an executive, Mr. Um, the, the ex-president started sending out stuff on his letterheads of the union and making commitments on behalf of the union on letterheads was unauthorized. So that's why the, the individual was suspended, Chairperson. We weren't making cheese of one and chalk of the other. Okay. Uh, it's, it's clear it's, it's one of these things saying that we'll ask you to come and report about the uh, Eastern Cape border rabbi and the Western Cape issue. Uh, it's just an outstanding issue. We'll try to facilitate any time uh, that uh, we must be given a report, especially that there are some members are thinking that uh, it, it's unfair, but we cannot, uh, some of us engage on that because we don't have facts. So we'll get effects from each department through me, through your good selves. Uh, you can um, give other people chance to respond in, in all questions which are in front of us. Thank you for, for giving us this uh, issue of uh, your COO. Locate other members of your delegation. The uh, chairperson, can, can I bring the CEO back? Or yes. Do you, is it, can I bring the CEO back? Uh, chair, chairperson, just to follow on with that, the issue on school sports. Excuse no, me, no, um, Chairperson. Yes, Honorable Dennis. No. Yes, Honorable. No. I, I just want to respond on the question that was posed to you by the president. <clears throat> Mr. Jury uh, is not in good standing because he lost the court case. And secondly, Saru must follow their constitution. They must go read the constitution. They were no, but, but the you constitution. don't. Yeah. Sorry, remember, Sorry. No, we must not do that. You will, you will, I'll give you uh, the second round after they've answered all the questions. I was trying just uh, to say to themselves, thank you. But I know that members, after all the answers, you are going to do what you are, go, you are doing in order that we, we must take an informed uh, decision as this committee. Uh, let, let, let's, 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 leave, let's give them that they must all answer because uh, uh, if we are going to interact with each and one question, I was trying not to facilitate the discussion at the end will ask questions, follow up questions about what the uh, president just said. Let, let them answer other questions. I thank you, Honorable Dennis. Your Apology, question, yeah. thank you. No, 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 don't apologize. Your question still stand. I uh, will give you the chance. Uh, Honorable Mushong. No, Chair, I thought, Mami, I'll come later with the follow up yeah. questions. Yes, yeah, okay. Um, let's go on uh, on the present. Uh, thank yes. you, Chairperson. Uh, the other issue that was raised, I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm just taking under, under, under school sports. I mean, uh, schools. And I know that it, that's a hot topic when we come every time around schools, but you know, uh, I heard the co colleagues talking about the leagues in schools. Firstly, it's, we, we don't have any local standing in the school structure. It's made quite clear by the education department that that belongs to them. We would love to, 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 put, uh, to, to, to take control of schools, but we do organize our tournaments in there. But our big problem started when we killed USASA in the early 90s. USASA used to deliver school sports 
to all the, the, the government schools. And the problem is not the Model C and the private schools. It, uh, the problem lies at our public, the, the, the normal public schools. We don't even do first at, at school. So the barrier to entry into school, school sports is very difficult. We got a, a program called Get Into Rugby, but you know, we're not hitting it in a big way because firstly, the teachers don't want to do any, uh, facilitate any uh, sport. If you want to, to do sport there, you have to do it yourself. You have to appoint a coach. Ever since we killed USASA, because they, they, they were volunteers who, who ran a successful program, and we killed that program off. The department and, and, and the Department of Education, you know, uh, we've been wrestling with this for years now. In our agreements with the EPG stuff, it's mentioned in the documents in our, in our contract. That we, we, we need to find a way that we can we get, either take control of the sport or, or we can't. Because the sport is controlled, that is the domain of the education department. And that's the, when we want to do things, the, 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 the schools, some schools keep back. And if you want to put something in there, you have to put your own people in, on board to do it. The teachers are not prepared to help anymore. They've taken away the merits. There were, there were some merits teachers used to get while they were involved in, in, in school sport. That's gone. So it's, it's very, very difficult to talk about school sport when we don't have access to school sport itself. We, we think we have, but we don't. And we do our part, and we've got, we got programs, but we're not making a, a, a big difference because of that barrier that we have around school. And, and it'll, that's the, the same for all other sports, especially in the, the, the public schools, and not the Model C and the private schools. They, they, there's a difference. It's a have not uh, struggling, and, and, and the barrier to entry there is getting worse and worse. So that's the, the school sports uh, thing, Chairperson. As far as the the, 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 the the doping in schools, it's a problem. I, I, just, I just mentioned, we don't have control of school sport. It's controlled by governing bodies in the, in the so-called private schools and in the Model C schools. You know? So you, 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 we've got no control of controlling the taking of uh, banned substances. We work well with SAIDs and we, we always work well with SAIDs. I think we had two of our members serving on the SAIDs board over time, the one passed away, Dr. De Kut. So, so, so we try our best with that and we promote that and we, and we continue promoting. Uh... Uh, continue promoting a, 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 a drug-free sport. We also do a, an autonomous that we do organize. We do testing at autonomous. We test the kids. It's part of participating in our competitions. We have a, if you want to participate, you have to be tested and you need to get permission from the parents. So it's not as easy as a, as, 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 as the senior players. There's a process. You have to get data from the, from the, from the parents and stuff, giving us permission to test the children while on tournament. Um, the issue of the stadiums, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big problem because if we don't have uh, uh, loud spectators, we're actually starting to look at retrenching staff at stadiums. The 2,000 people doesn't, don't even pay for the opening of the gates. We're running at losses and huge losses in the stadium. So the stadium is a big, big problem. If we can't get spectators, we're going to lose more people, not only for the stadium staff, uh, but, uh, but for all the unions. So the collective uh, losses to, to date is 240 million for unions. And it's going to increase and increase, and a lot more people are going to lose their jobs. So stadiums are important. We need to get stadiums. Uh, 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 people back in stadiums. Uh, we also, I, 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 I just think, uh, Chairperson, there tends to be double standards here. You go to shopping center in, at, at Waterfront in December, you've got 100,000 people going to the shopping center. There's no showing of your vaccinated uh, certificate, vaccination certificate when you enter, and there's uh, very few, so there's no social distancing, but small little, few toilets there. Same at the beaches. Same on the plane, you sit in the closed plane right next to each other. But you cannot host more spectators in open air stadium where scientists say it's the best place to be in open air stadium. So I just feel that some, this, this double standard has been practiced when it comes to stadia. And we work with the department that we've been working and I know the department has been fighting tooth and nail to open stadiums. But we need to look at these things that we need to apply a principle and the principles apply right across the board, else we're going to lose more jobs. We really, if we, the, the retrenchments are going to start and our numbers are going to increase in the number of unemployment we have currently. 
Um, what's the next point? So, 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 don't check what is the other question. As the demo, uh, the, the, the demographics of the 54%, 42% of that makeup are uh, so called African uh, black, 24.9% are color, 3% are Indian, and 28% are white. Uh, Chairperson, I really feel un uncomfortable when I have to talk about white colored and Indian, especially when we but when we, when we, we talk, uh, we are, we are non-racial organization and we talk about stuff. It's, it looks like we're perpetuating multiracialism. The 4.5 million regional allocation, I'm gonna ask uh, the, the, the CFO. The CFO. The CFO. Thank you, um, Mr. President. Just in terms of the the allocation, and, and I guess it comes back to my slides in terms of how we generate the revenues within South African Rugby Union, where we previously had indicated that in excess of 80% of money is actually generated via commercial streams of broadcasting and sponsorships. And then I've also indicated in terms of how that is allocated across the cost centers. I think it's important to understand that our system is one of cross subsidization and, and our funding currently. Um, in terms of the questions that are being raised across around women's rugby is at, at levels that is that must be supported and cross-subsidized by other uh, properties, i.e. Um, in terms of national teams and competitions, because we just don't generate that sufficient funding. Um, and then to come back to the point of the allocation that we get from the department on an annual basis, uh, we get that allocation more or less in November in a year. Our year end is December, so generally when we get the allocation from a principal perspective, it becomes a little bit late in our financial year to spend the money. So we work on a system of rollover, and that rollover is we will be spending that money. Now, now when one looks at a 4.5 million rand that we potentially get, and that was our 2021-22 allocation, it actually has got subset that is not just at schools, not just at women, there is sometimes allocation in terms of deaf rugby, wheelchair rugby, high performance black coaches, so that they are program driven. We do spend the money on the program, but where we cannot deliver a program because of COVID at schools, all we do is we defer it. So it's not a matter of didn't spend the money. If we are unable to spend the money, then we are unable to. We work with the department and we get some form of a roll, roll over. But when he looks at, I think there was another question that was asked in terms of if you get receive that funding and that's the only pot of money that you receive. Uh, and we do apply for world rugby funding as well for certain programs and especially on women's rugby and we have received it. Those are only costs that's, that is, that to an extent subsidize a bigger pot of spend. So, I mean, in last year already, we've, re we've spent just over 21 million just with the women's spring box which meant that the bulk of that was actually cross-subsidized for other properties. So, so we are absolutely short-funded by this property. We are reliant on our own ability to commercialize those events. And in the absence of those, and in the absence of events not happening, we definitely have, have shortfalls. So, so our principle is we do spend um, over budgets. We do make applications to uh, lottery as well. And when that funding becomes available, we do report on, on the spend. And also just to add that, I mean, we're an organization that goes through a process of attestation. So we've got external auditors that actually signs off our financial statements. Um, and where you have an organization with a flatlined reserves, we just don't have the luxury to spend money that we don't have. Um, and maybe then just to add to some other questions um, that was posed on the, the likes of the Kings, and I'll, I'll really only focus on the financial part of the Kings is the financial sustainability. An industry must be financially uh, sustainable. If you don't have funding in the system, you can't fund teams, you can't fund participation. And the King's matter of us not being able to do it was purely, it was liquidated because it did not have sufficient funding made available, private or public sector, to be able to field a team that participated in an international event. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, thank you, Bubi. Uh, 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 Chairperson, there was a question about the safeguarding policy. We do have one. It's not on our website because we're operating remotely for, for quite some time now. We just got back into office. 
and that should be on our our, our, our website shortly. Sorry, it is on the website. So sorry, it's, it's on the website. Uh, whoever asked that question, Chairperson, it is on the website. They can find that safeguarding policy on our website. What other questions are there? Uh, she's supporting different communities and she's different development in rural areas. The development in rural areas. Um, uh, the country is asked for a breakdown of, 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 of the of the of the so-called uh, uh, township schools. Primary schools is uh, 2,640. Senior schools 1,861. Total of 4,501 4, schools in total. Both senior and high school. Education and transformation and English training, training facilities, etc. Uh, 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 definition of somebody asked a question about the definition of the of, of training and playing facilities. Uh, the one thing that that uh, that that um, that I can can, can say for, for sure. Facilities is not a part of our competence, competency building facilities. We just don't have the funding for facilities. You know, facilities are normally provided by the, by, by the department or, or the, the, the uh, department of, of uh, public works. You know, we don't have stadia. Our schools don't have, a lot of schools don't have facilities. And that is another cost that, that is way beyond our reach and any other sport reach to build facilities. That's the competency of, of government. But, uh, but the training, yes, we have the capacity building training, we have enterprise development training, we, have, uh, we, we do investment in, in CSI projects. And, and, and the one thing I think where we can help with, 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 with uh, getting the, the ladies fast track is by, 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 by lobbying the uh, Department of Trade and Industry to make uh, women's sport uh, access, uh, as part of the CSI, so we can have access to the funds that are available uh, for Section 18A companies, you know, the the three percent that companies have to provide the listed companies, we can access those funds. We can make a big huge difference in women's sport in the country. We just need to to, to lobby uh, guy, to, uh, uh, Department of Trade and Industry to classify that as as CSI. Uh, Sorry, this transformation targets for women. Yeah, the transformation targets, you know, we are, I, I don't, I don't have that readily available for you, but I will bring a transformation plan is on the website. I'll have to pull that off, chairperson. I can actually at the next meeting, I'll bring that breakdown and I can, and I can actually explain that. But it's on our website, and I can't tell you offhand all these things. Uh, so there were a lot of questions or so that went on the agenda, but uh, I try and answer as many as I can. Transformation women are they getting enough exposure and what's the pay gap? What are we doing to close the pay gap? Uh, uh, transformation of women getting exposure. You know, uh, we, we, we're getting we're getting enough, but not we're getting some, but not enough exposure uh, uh, on, 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 on on all platforms. But we are working on that with with, our, with with the with super sport and with SABC, and we're looking at other channels to make sure the women get the necessary uh, uh, exposure. Currently, uh, women's sport in, in, in the world is amateur, and we're moving to what the World Rugby just put out a plan of, of moving from an amateur game to a professional game where women will get paid. We do contract uh, uh, 19 of our national team players currently. What is the current plan for some transformation targets? There's a transfer. We, 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 our current uh, targets are. Uh, 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 we've got a contract uh, with the department till 2030, and I'm going to ask um, Samantha to just give us uh, the, 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 the the target. Sorry, Samantha. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. So we have charter targets till 2030, which is 60% uh, generic black and 25% female on all levels, and then a 50% BE target. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sam. Uh, any other questions? What do we left with it? Thank you, President. Chairperson, there's a question around. Can't you, Chairperson? No. 
President, I'm giving now to the department before I'm taking follow up questions. I've seen already the hands. Uh, we still have our department to respond in between. And then I'll take follow ups this time. Uh, DG. Yeah, Chairperson, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, maybe let me ask uh, Simpi whether there was an issue of the budget. Um, uh, Simpi, why can you deal with that? And then DDG can. And then I will deal with the remaining uh, three or four questions uh, that relate to EPG. And then there's the issue of the tripartite agreement um, that was raised. Um, and let me ask, um, uh, can you respond uh, simply on the budget issue? Uh, thank you, thank you, DG, and um, a good good morning to the chairperson and the members of the portfolio committee, uh, as well as uh, president um, and the leadership of Saru and uh, the management of the department. Um, DG. I think um, Saru did um, uh, cover fairly well the issue of the budget. For mine, is 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 uh, just to to confirm that uh, the indication is indeed correct, particularly in terms of the underspending. This is not necessarily underspending as such, as explained by by Pupise. It's a timing issue in terms of the 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 financial year. Uh, which is ending in, in December. Uh, but I think, DG, it's important that on the breakdown of the budget, one needs to perhaps just give a little bit of a, a, a detail that um, firstly, the, the budget itself, um, uh, the allocation is, is really as per the application as received from, from, um, from SARU. And um, there are the, the key uh, areas which are covered uh, uh, here at DG, uh, some of which, like for instance, uh, if you look at women's uh, um, uh, schools, Rabbi, so you've got a portion for that, which is targeting just uh, uh, women's schools, Rabbi, but you also have a portion that is for um, getting to Rabbi. And if you look at getting to Rabbi, it is actually a program that uh, incorporate within it um, a schools, uh, um, a, 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 a rabbi, primarily focusing on schools that um, have not really played rabbi in the past. So, and uh, in addition to that, you would then have a Vuga Development Rabbi, uh, which is the program that. Uh, Saru is running in, in conjunction with uh, the um, SA Rabbi Legends. And in, in, as part of that um, uh, program, the target is, is, is significant, is, is primarily schools and also primarily uh, uh, also getting uh, uh, young uh, girls and uh, women into, into Rabbi. And then there's a portion DG uh, which, uh, and Chairperson, which basically then covers wheelchair Rabbi, which, uh, plus or minus uh, 400,000 as part of that uh, allocation. So that is in, in, in summary, just uh, um, the key programs that are covered uh, um, uh, through that 4.5 uh, million uh, support that the, the department uh, uh, um, uh, gives to, to SA Rabbi. Uh, thank you, uh, DG. I think uh, uh, that just covers the issue of uh, a budget and budget breakdowns. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Gigi. Good morning, Chairperson and honorable members. Good morning to the president uh, and the executive of the South African Rugby Union and uh, uh, the all other members present. Uh, thank you, DG. I think from our side, there's a lot that has been covered by what Simpiwe has indicated, but just to indicate that 
Rugby is one of the priority codes of sport for school sport as well. And there's funding that comes from the conditional grant in the provinces towards rugby development. Um, we work very closely with the Schools Rugby Association, which is part of our joint national task teams and our provincial national task teams as well, uh, where they offer capacity building initiatives and actually provide all the technical support uh, to the provincial, the district events for the school sport championships and also assist with the provision of all the technical support when the national school sports championships takes place because rugby is one of the codes of sports there. So from our part, uh, DG uh, uh, Chairperson, I think we've covered most of the things that, were, that we had to respond to. Uh, and I think DG will also then speak um, after me. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Did you? Did you? We have lost you completely, or is it on my side, Chairperson? No, she, she, she has done. Can done. I proceed, uh, Did uh, Sorry, has, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Yes, so she we has can done. Get, uh, okay. Oh, it's, it is on my side, then, Chair. Yes, yes. Continue, Chairperson. Um, can I start then with the issue of transformation? Thank you very much, Chairperson. I think uh, one must clarify uh, Honorable Mshongo's question in relation to or a statement about EPG. I think uh, one must just indicate EPG is an instrument that aims to measure progress made on interventions to achieve transformation in sport. And as a consequence, it is important that it must be seen as a one tool that also provides opportunity for enforcement uh, when these targets are not being achieved. So it compels federations to say, you've got your own self-set targets, you have a responsibility to transform, and these are the fields in which you must transform and that is throughout the whole value chain of sport, whether it is training, whether it is uh, small teams or big teams, whether it is about clubs, uh, it is about membership. It just is a comprehensive tool. And uh, we believe that it is a tool we must all embrace and utilize where it gives us clear outcomes where there is no progress in transformation. And uh, I, so it is a tool that uh, also, as I've indicated, um, even now, as uh, the president was talking about the disjuncture in time, or the fact that uh, this looks at 2019, uh, and they are reporting now in 2022 on the progress that has been made. So it, it is an accurate EPG report uh, that was stating, but it's a time lag between the departments, uh, uh, the, the federation's presentation, as Rabbi have done, the president, vis-a-vis -vis what was the situation obtaining at the time. Now, so we will continue to use this uh, particular tool and uh, make sure that the recommendations or their findings are addressed and uh, then use it to ensure that transformation is achieved and where there is a need for department to intervene for failure to achieve those targets, that the intervention is made, but is informed by scientific analysis and scientific report rather than to, to do the thumb sucking of whether this one is transforming or not, and in which areas we are not transforming. The second question that I wanted to address at a high level uh, relating to transformation is an access to facilities, uh, Chairperson, that this matter uh, and the portfolio committee has been seized with it on several occasions. And uh, it is clear that there is a challenge uh, in that this is a responsibility that is constitutionally centralized in local as well as provincial levels, particularly the districts as well as the metros. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the issue of interventions, then chairperson, honorable chairperson, we're talking about what government does and the department at this stage through the MIG for the districts and the, and the local municipalities, which is a limited money, but is an effort to try and address the issue of infrastructure as well as access 
to facilities that are appropriate for sport to develop. Then for the metros is the USDG, which we have asked as the portfolio committee also assist in ensuring that metros do budget for these facilities and they cannot be left then uh, outside of the process to provide facilities in the municipalities for our people and our children to have places that are safe to play. But it is an issue that is uh, revolving around budgeting by these local as well as uh, metros uh, to assist uh, us in having access to decent sporting facilities. So we are working on that, uh, Chairperson, and I'm happy that the portfolio committee had taken note of this issue and intended to also assist so that budget and resources are based uh, to ensure that uh, the facilities are accessible. This, however, Chair, does not then exonerate us to sit back and fold our arms. And that is why the department have these its own programs to try and make sure that these facilities, whether it's multi-purpose courts, whether it is the gyms, we are provided uh, in the local municipalities, but with a limited budget that we have. And that is what we are doing currently as a department to try and provide these facilities where we can with the budget available. Now, the next point, Chairperson, that was raised here was in relation to the threat of the tripartite uh, relationship between ourselves and the Department of Basic Education and SASCOC. And we indeed do accept that there is a challenge around the issue of uh, what um, the president have raised on federations having access to school court and all those. However, the MOU, as we have reported before, has been uh, under revision and the issue in particular raised uh, around the available resources to promote and facilitate play by schools. And that is the referees, whether it's coaches or trainers, um, is an important aspect of this MOU. Now, what has we, as, uh, the department done? As we know that recently the minister to bridge the gap at this stage about the lack of these resources, human resources. Minister had come with an innovative idea, which was launched uh, this week in Pumalanga on Monday, which is called the Sports Ambassadors, where we're taking the uh, pilot in partnership with the TUT University to utilize the sport men and women who are no longer active in sport so that they become then trainers or they become coaches and that the schools are provided with this. This is a pilot we have started while trying to implement properly the issue of the MOU that we are finalizing at this stage as we have indicated. And it covers four codes of sport and that is rugby. It covers the issue of netball, the issue of football and athletics. And the, that is what we are doing. It is at a small scale and it is going to grow. So that at the end of the day, we do have the opportunity to raise resources. And the department's budget is limited, Jefferson, and this we have said. But if we had enough money, we would cover these 25,000 schools and be able to provide them with the, at least a coach or a cluster of coaches per cluster of schools. But it is what we have to work with the basic education and see how best this can be achieved. But we are starting at that pilot. We then intend to scale it up. But 25,000 schools requires a quite an amount of money in or investment into our children to play. But we don't have that budget as we speak uh, to cover that. So we'll ask that uh, support then be provided in that regard. Uh, Chairperson, I think the, the issue raised by Honorable Mamabulu as well as Honorable CBC about uh, access by rural children and townships is what we also fully agree. And that is why if we look at these pilots, these pilots are mainly intending to target the quintile one and two schools so that those are no fee schools which are mainly in the rural and the township areas. And we accept that uh, we have to make change and provide decent access to facilities as well as human resource. Otherwise, this pipeline of schools will not 
give us the outcome we want of the best rugby players at the Springbok level or netball at Protea level. So I just wanted to submit to a person that those are the efforts that we are making at this stage and provide the clarity on the questions that might not have been uh, answered. I, I would like to thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Uh, honorable members have been having the hand that it has been up. Uh, let me start with that hand. I didn't want to say uh, he must lower the hand. Honorable Mshongo, your hand has been up. Honorable Dennis, your hand is up. Mm. Yes, Honorable Song. Honorable Song. Okay, Honorable Dennis. Thank you, um, Chairperson, for this second opportunity. I, uh, I've, I've heard the President um, explaining in, in detail about the, the CEO and also about the um, Mr. Mr. Nautz, Zouts Marais. Um, and, and all I wanted to do, uh, to say to you, Chair, I thank you for, for, the, for, for suggesting that, that they must come to our committee. So I won't go in detail. All I want to say to the, to the, to, to the President, whilst we wait for this opportunity, I want to advise the President, please apply your constitution fairly. Um, when a member is in good standing or not in good standing, <clears throat> cause of a court case, and please don't, don't destroy rugby in the Western Cape. We, we don't want to go back to people breaking away and form their own unions <clears throat> because it's a, uh, rugby has a, is, is deeply rooted in our country as an important sports uh, and, 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 and many sports aspire to achieve what rugby has achieved in World Cup status. And, and we don't want to destroy that either. But all we want to want uh, the president and his leadership to apply their minds fairly. In fact, Chairperson, I want to ask that the Mr. Minutes. Excuse me, Chairperson, just close the door there. I want to ask the president um, that he must provide us with the legal cost. Uh, all the legal costs spent so far for me is a waste of money. It's common sense if they apply their constitution and that legal uh, opinion ask is, is, a, is a political game that has been played to, um, to safeguard someone and to pay someone a salary uh, that is not in good standing. It's not good for rugby, it's not good for our country. I, I, I just wanted to say that, um, and, and Chairperson, that um, it is very important. Um, I am sorry that, um, uh, that I'm not going to... Um, as other questions now, uh, Chairperson, I am, I am pleased with the, the responses we receive from, from, from all the other various sections and divisions and responsible per persons. But of course, the members have asked questions that um, we in future will monitor and that this committee will have to have oversight on as to the progress that's been made in the rugby and where the shortfalls are, we will have to monitor. Bring, um, ask them to come and report to us. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. I don't know, I've been calling Honorable Mshongo, that's right. Chairperson, yeah, I'm here. Apology. Yeah. Chair. Yes, Honorable Mshongo. Thank you very much. Apology, Chair. No Chair, uh, I have follow up uh, questions. Can I go? Uh, DG, EPG is not working. I think I've mentioned it several times. How can you give? A federation to set themselves targets. It shows that it's not working. The measurement tool that you're using, they cannot even achieve their own self target, which were set by themselves. It's not working. I think it has different numbers, which wrong numbers. The president today just stated clearly that the numbers were wrong. I'm not I'm sucking, it's recorded. Now the measurement is not working, it's not measuring even the outcomes. And one of the things that I, I wanted to to, to, to ask you, uh, uh, DG. I think I want to concur with the uh, president. Stadiums must be open. It's high time, not only rugby, all federation 
we have lost, I think unemployment is too high in South Africa. We don't have a, a, a sports game. We don't have museum. I think this, that's why I wanted to say the minister must come. It shows here clearly that this federation it's, has suffered. They can't pay electricity because the stadium are closed. And who came with this 2,000 friends? How did you come with the actual, uh, the, the number of 2,000 people that must attend? Imagine FNP, it's plus, it takes plus minus 110,000 friends, but there's a target of 2,000. How did it come to that? What mechanism did you use? No, it shows Guti, these numbers are damsak, but nonetheless, Chairperson, I wanted to go to the president. President, I think you're talking about multiracial, multiracialism, but on your presentation, there's Black Coaches Program. Where's multiracialism? When I ask about Indian whites, you question that. Diversity is a broad word. Diversity is one of the key issues that will make sure that we achieve transformation. You must check the diversity part, geographically, race, and people with physical disadvantage, uh, physical challenges. In your, in your, in your executive, do you have anyone who's who has physical challenges, or in your staff members, the the target is 2.1 percent uh, across a uh, government fears. I wonder in 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 your federation, how many staff do you have who have physical challenges? Diversity affects geographically, race, and people with physical uh, challenges. I think, uh, President, it is clear that in your presentation, there are no key performance areas. Targets are not met, it's clear. And what is the reason? Let me go to the issue of CEO. I think we questioned this. Chairperson, yesterday, I was deeply touched. I told the House that SASCOC, if the National Federation we have sickness, issues of corruption, issues of ethical leadership, which is questionable, now it shows that good government won't be realized. Even in this federation, it's clear. Yesterday I've said it, today I'm still saying it. Mr. President, we cannot cover up. You cannot just uh, be thinking about the bush. You don't tell us exactly what is happening. The CEO has lost the court case. It is clear, even in your statement, it's clear. And he must be suspended. I, I believe and I still propose he must be suspended and due processes will follow. Share with us with uh, your, your vision or the, the, firm, the legal firm that gave you a, an opinion. What is the opinion? Can you share with the committee? What is that op legal opinion? And how much have you used to date since the beginning of this issue? How much have you used for legal, to ask legal advice with this issue of the CEO? He must be suspended. And Chairperson, I believe that I am um, disturbed. Oh, Chair? I wanted no, to sorry. find. Okay. Sorry, how, was, how, okay, Chair. Why are we getting so many advices, but we don't implement those legal advices from you? What What is the name of the firm? Can you share that with us? What is the name of the firm? And I think I want to refer you to why. Why is there no reference to Mr. to the CEO in the presentation? It's clear there was no reference to the CEO. And it shows that you are hiding things for us as a portfolio committee. This issue is serious. This is a serious accusation against him. Why don't you take steps to set him aside till further a processes or unless the advice from the law, legal firm I'm not aware of. He must be suspended and we believe that that, that thing must be implemented. Chairperson, I think I want to, uh, uh, to, to, to leave it there with my, my issue. This issues of Western Cape, I've raised it a long time ago. How can we have a, a, a federation uh, that is not uh, fulfilling its mandate? I think we must not use our money or our taxpayers' money for things that are not going to benefit the community as a South Africa. Thank you very much, Chair. May I give it to the president? I'm sorry. <sighs> Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, our, our, our legal company is ENS, and the person, uh, uh, persons who are advising us currently is Professor Michael Katz and Advocate Vincent Trengrove. 
You know, if one fail, you know, fails to follow what your legal advice tells you, then we get ourselves into trouble. We stuck to our legal advice, and I, I take, uh, I, I heard what, what the, the, the honorable uh, gentleman said, uh, but we have not reneged on our fiduciary responsibility or our corporate governance. So, uh, really, we, we can't just be, 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 be accused of things that we haven't done. We have followed due process, and we've got an organization of, of qualified executives sitting on the board. So I, we, I do actually uh, take exception to that comment. Thank you, President. Point of order, Chair. Yes. I think you did not respond to, to us how much did they cost to get that legal advice? And can you have the legal opinion from that firm? And we'll take it from there. How much did they use as a federation to get that legal advice in? Since it started, since inception, not only today, not only when they issued the media statement yesterday, how much did it cost? And then which money is it used? Is it development money or is it a sponsored money? Now, I think that thing, and I'm not going to apologize. Ethical leadership is questionable. I've said, I've said it last uh, yesterday. I'm saying it today. You live it now, it will continue. It will perpetuate in different sports federation. Thank you very much. Honorable Mshongo, uh, I'm suspecting uh, if we want detail of the course, can we give them chance to go and present or forward that information? The information with figures which are raised on the floor, uh, we need a, a thorough detail. I'm suspecting in that uh, I must uh, intervene uh, that uh, we must get that information. Uh, it can't be on top of their heads and uh, because we'll challenge them if they did give us discrepancy in that information. Uh, as this committee, we noted uh, that that uh, requirements uh, will we'll take care that we must get that. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Honorable, uh, Oh, did you? Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. I, I yes. think uh, again one must address one must address this issue of return of spectators, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, we have indicated, and we must indicate again. Government has not stopped the issue of return of spectators for the sake of doing it. Throughout the world, there has been processes to follow to get to a level of return of spectators to the events, including the sporting events. These processes include are paramount, the issue of prevention of the spread of the virus. When the department had submitted a plan, we had a phased in approach. The worst thing that happened in this country was then the discovery of Omicron, which then led to not just the sporting events, this country was isolated, excluded, and unfairly discriminated by the powers in West as well as Europe even in terms of grounding of flights or access to getting out of any of any opportunity in this country because of Omicron, we had to go back to a very serious challenge of control of the spread and convincing the world that this is a different kind of thing compared to what had happened with other um, attacks that we had faced on the issue of COVID-19. Based on that, Jefferson, those plans had to be revised. We have been consulting extensively on this issue. But importantly, we moved to a level of mobilizing civil society from the all sporting fraternity. And that included a project called the hashtag, it's in your hands, return to play encouraging South Africans to vaccinate, 
so that there is an opportunity to then open up the stadia. And government was clear we needed to reach a certain 70% immunity so that we are able to go back to our normal lives. The country faced a lot of reluctance and misinformation around vaccination, and the uptake was less than what was expected. And that then resulted in continuous use of the, the, the state of disaster. Even one government had made it clear that the intention is to remove the state of disaster because we would have reached a certain immunity level and be able to resume our normal lives. Over and above that, then the president came with a VUMA campaign for people to be encouraged to vaccinate so that they can resume their normal lives, including the issue of return to play by the spectators as a program. This partnership then between our department, the deputy president leading this, together with the Department of Health, have moved more than seven to, to seven provinces to try and encourage people to vaccinate. We have engaged with the network level to try and make sure that we convince everybody that it is time to return, to have the spectators return if they are vaccinated. But the country is facing dual contradictory issues here. There are those who say, yes, you open up for everyone, but do not include the condition of vaccination. There are those who say, no, 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 there must be people who are vaccinated only. And the gatherings are of different nature. And there is that debate contestation that government tries to balance and consult as broadly as possible. So that when you open one event for any program at a 50% that we have recommended at this stage as a department or, or more, is that then we'll be able to help federations have what we call break even and make some profit. Because we have learned from our own pilot Jefferson that the 2000 does not give federations any break even. In fact, they operated a loss. SAFA was the first to do that when we had Ghana to come and play in this country. They would be a bite for bite, they decided to bite the bullet. And when the pilot came back, they had suffered huge losses on the number of that. But the 2000 was not informed by the department or by government. It was informed by scientific advice to say what can be done at that stage due to the issue of the state of coronavirus in the country. And that 2000 then was what was allowed in terms of the state of disaster. So now we are at a stage where we've submitted a revised proposal. Government is busy with that again to see what can be done balancing everything else that can create risks to life, but at the same time, enabling people to go back to their normal lives. Clearly, there is an indication that the issue of coronavirus is being uh, attended to, and that there are measures South Africa have in place, and that is what we have submitted as a motivation on why we believe more spectators must be allowed to return there. So let's allow that process, Chairperson, to go through the scrutiny it needs, including our scientists, who advise government, the entry seat, as well as then the cabinet to be able to then to advise on what is the next level of opening up beyond the 2000. But we have made a submission, have consulted broadly, and there has been a general consensus that at least the maximum of, or sorry, the minimum of 50% or more should be the what is considered by government. And that government have said, is linked also to the issue of the state of disaster being a, 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 a replaced. And the, what is happening now is about the issue of health regulations uh, that had to be revised. And once granted, it will be there for public comment. On our side, we have submitted that we can utilize SASRIA Act as one of the measures to manage the situation if we do open, which have always been there. and all jobs in this country are able to utilize to manage the issue of opening up big events where there are spectators. So all those are the things and measures government is doing. So I just want to allay fears around the issue of whether government is serious about this or not. Government means business about opening up, but it cannot be reckless. Thank you, Chairperson. Um. Honorable members, Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, 
the president of uh, South African Rugby Union. Let me take this opportunity uh, to say I do thank all who is here, the contributions, uh, the advices. As I've said, some of questions, uh, they've just emerged because we are leaders, we are members of the committee. When we saw things in the media, we just want to be taken aboard. Uh, some details of the questions of the members, they need that uh, the information must be forwarded through my office and the office must circulate to members. In case members that in this uh, order which you are rising, we don't have chance to call you, but the information must be circulated, hoping that even the final decisions of the lawyers of uh, East South African Rugby Union, when you get it, your first stop is the department. And then the department, uh, I'm suspecting that uh, as they're listening, the information that you are also wanting, they will also be part of doing oversight for Tina. Uh, whilst we are going to do oversight to the department, that all the outstanding information that asked by members, we must get. Uh, I'm suspecting in that way, uh, come the slot that will be a uh, calling department and you, Saru, but the information will be with us. And I'm, I'm, I'm taking this opportunity to thank everyone. And I do feel that we've exhausted the questions uh, whilst others, other questions, we don't have a preview of having them with the information. Uh, I'm, I'm about to, to close, President, your closing remarks. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't answer all the questions in detail, but I'm sure when you call us back, we can give you all the details that are required to, to inform the members. And I just apologize. We stuck to the agenda, we prepared for the agenda. Yes. But uh, when you call us back, we'll give you the details that are required. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Up DG? the box, up the box. Lord, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Chairperson, no, thank you very much. We will then await your guidance uh, in terms of us coming back on the issues you said we would need to come back with the RAP ESA uh, yes. so that those issues are addressed in depth. Uh, so the community person will guide us. Otherwise, we thank you for the opportunity uh, to make the to be part of this engagement. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, DG. Honorable members, I thought you'd give me a closing <laughs> remarks. <laughs> no, Chairman, don't give him that set opportunity. He will start the meeting again. <laughs> don't do that. Hey. I'm, 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 you know this one, this is such a minister. <laughs> Thank you so much, honorable you, members. Sir, sir. The Thank meeting you. is adjourned. We don't have any minutes. Thank, Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks, colleagues. Bye. Welcome, Chairperson. Thank you, 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 Chairperson. Thank you,